Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of The Centre Circle. This is episode 21 and it's uh, another special episode because it's not only just the lads here. We are joined today by a very special guest, none other than Chris Dixon. Welcome to the pod. Welcome, welcome. Boop, 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 boop. Much love, much love, much love. Unlike goals never done. Is that, is that, is that, is that the song? <laughs> goals never done? That's, that's the motto. That's, that's the motto. That's the motto. That's the motto. Okay. Apart from okay. a few clubs, but we'll get them to it. Wow. <laughs> you done know your, you know your research. You done 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 know your research. You know your research. You know your research. Wow. Okay, okay. So as you can see, that's the energy we're on today. <laughs> um, we're going to go around the room, introduce ourselves. I'm Isaac. T. Daz in the building. Marky Mark. And you guys are listening to the Center Circle. Right. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome love, to the love, pod. Love, love, love every time. Um, love every time. Where do we start? Should we just start? Should we start from the beginning? Start at the I wanna beginning. Know about Chris <laughs> Dixon. Good, the, good. The, how he became the man he is today. Okay, where did you first start? How did you start? Because if I go back to where I first met you, yeah. That's a long, that's, a, that's actually a, a long, long way forward. Long, long, it's a long time, time ago, bro. but it's actually a long forward, long way in the, into the journey. Okay. That's a long way into the journey. Yeah. That's mad. So, if I, so when I first met him, right? Okay. He was this big mouth <laughs> joker on the sideline. Yeah. <laughs> One crutch, <laughs> pure mouth. <laughs> just telling his teammates, I don't know what he's telling his teammates to clamp me. I don't know what he's telling them to do. I don't think these, when I tell these, I used to, I used to play up front. The, you I, played up front. You can't vouch. You can't vouch. Really? For me. You can't yeah. vouch me play scoring twenty five goals a season. But I used to play up front. Told him. I mean, he played up front until me and Anton came in. The season. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Right, oh. 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 Oh
Okay. Um, big up Jim Dean. Um, and then, um, so Jim spoke to Wayne Burnett. I managed to get on loan to Dulwich and Dulwich was in the league above. Yeah. Or a couple of leagues above. I'm not sure at the time, but um, I went to Dulwich on loan, played six games, scored six goals at the end of the season. Um, then I got approached by an agent. Agent comes along, says, uh, look, I can get you pro, etc." I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Me, I'm none the wiser to any of this. I'm saying, I don't know what, anything about no pro, anything about no agency. I just want to play football and you're telling me that I can make more money out of this. All right, cool, let's see. Um, sent me to a couple of clubs. I went Barnet. I remember going to Barnet on trial. Um, there was 40 men at the trial. Really? Right, I was hearing all kinds of languages. <laughs> a French man. There was a bare different languages. I'm like, what's going on here? And only one man from that trial got picked out, Jason Punchin. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. wow. Okay. And that's where Punchin's career kicked yeah, off. Yeah, started oh, even... Barnet. There's a madness from there. But um, then... I had Wayne on the phone to me saying, look, come back, come back, come back. And I was like, oh, this agent saying I can go here, this agent saying I can go there. And Wayne's saying, Dicko, just come back. I will get you to where you need to get to. And fair news to the man. Mm. And got me to where I needed to get to. And literally, it was a case of, I went back to Dulwich. And again, entertainment factor, yeah. having fun, scoring goals. And that was it. And to the point where Wayne's on the sidelines saying, mm. Dicko, Put on a show for me. I want to see what you're going to do for me today. And I'm, I'm thinking, what? What's, what's this guy? Like, literally just gave me free reign to kind of like, mm-hmm, express yeah. myself. And yeah, I did an absolute madness. Like, mm. scored 31 goals before yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Before New Year's. Wow. Yeah. His stats Mad. were Dulles. crazy. Mad. I don't think you understand, Bro. right? As a, as, a, as a kid growing up, trying Bro. to navigate the, the football scene, hearing about what you did, Bro. was... It mad was everywhere. It like, was mad. Going to pits, you'd hear about it. <laughs> yeah. Just go, just kicking ball anywhere. You'd hear it. It was the talk it. of the time, bro. No, seriously. It was literally the talk of the time, bro. Seriously. What was, what was even stranger around that time is I was working in an engineering firm in King's Cross, and I had a manager who was sitting across me, um, or two of them. And one of them used to pick up lo- local paper all the time. Okay, yeah. So oh. Every week he's coming in on a Monday saying, Scored again, did you? Give me the paper again. Like, the press again. Oh, scored again, did you? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I another, there was another woman there, and she was like, oh, and she's not into football now. So I'm saying, okay. but she, she was clearly the hater of the pack. So, I'm saying, yeah. so she was on some. Oh yeah, he scored again, but whatever. So I'm saying, like, he'll be here next year. And I remember going back to my mum and saying to my mum, listen to what this woman said to me. Innit? My mum said, what's her name? So I was a pastor in it. Oh. <laughs> Let's bring me her name. Bring her name. <laughs> Bearing in mind, my mom's Jamaican. Was when, 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 Jamaican yeah. you, when you meet my mom, you think she's like, you think that <laughs> yeah. the influence is strong. <laughs> so she's like, bring me her name. So I said name. And she said, okay, watch this, see this name. <laughs> She will see something. She will see today. She will see something. I was like, wow, because she was just like on it. And then literally within a year, well, less than a year, I was gone. And literally it was just like, nice. it was crazy. Like I remember, I remember just hearing from Wayne every game he saying, you never know who's watching. You never know who's watching. Wow, you never okay. know who's watching. I'm thinking, oh, who's watching? Oh, so oh, who's so watching? To, to that point, did that add any pressure? When he made statements like that, did it add pressure or did it kind of fuel you Him? to perform? Pressure? perform? Just, no, because some people in that moment, they might, it might be added pressure. They might think in the moment, oh, okay, yeah, but then they get in the field and they, you. they you know, misfire. If, I, if I'm, I'm not going to answer for him, but if I'm Chris Dixon and knowing how he is, if someone says to me, show him what you can do, all that stuff, yes. you never know who's watching. But, uh, I'm no already more. showing what I can do, <laughs> but someone's just winding me up to just do even more. Up, yeah. You know what it was? It was, it was, I took it as banter. Okay. I just didn't take it seriously enough. Yeah, so I just yeah. thought, I'm just going to carry on doing what I'm doing. Because, mm. like, and it was, but it was to the point where I was like, bro, you're, you're fueling an extrovert to go okay. even extra. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And okay. I was like, okay, like, this is <laughs> right. Let me just yeah. show you what time it is to say. So, to the point where I'm in, like, he will tell you, I, I used to do, I'd be in the tunnel. I'll be in the tunnel and I'm bouncing, bouncing. Yeah, yeah, let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to get two today. I'm going to get two today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I'm, and he did as well. Oh and the thing is, wow. to the point where there was opposition teams like getting angry, like, who's this guy? That's what I'm saying. Mm. But what I didn't realize and what I learned further on now being a coach is psychologically, that's me one up on you. Yeah, mm. got you. But obviously at the time, I was just hyped. Yeah. I was just like, nah, like, I'm going to score today. I don't care. I'm having fun. Let's go. Let's go. But 
like I said, now I'm a co- now I'm a coaching and I'm and I'm looking back at things and I've studied psychology as well. So I'm thinking, mm-hmm. oh, do you know what? That was actually the mindset, mm. and that was me being one up on them and them not even realizing it. But to me, it was just natural. Yeah. That's your. You even try. That's almost like your version of the Roy Keane in the tunnel. Man is scared because he's got that steely yeah, look. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And before they've even stepped out into the pitch, the battle's already half lost. Yeah. Right? And because I've, and, and as I say to the kids that I coach now, I say, look, 50, um, 80% of football is here. Yeah. 80% yeah. doesn't matter whether it's 80% of what you're going to think about doing next or 80% of what you're thinking before the game or during the game. 80% of football is here. 10% is your talent, your feet, what you're going to do with it. But if this doesn't work, that 10% don't work. Yeah. Mm. Massive, and 10% yeah. is who you know. So, from you have you have this breakout season, and and like like we've we've already said, it was the talk of Southeast London, and uh, a protein comes in, or I'm, I'm assuming there was a few, but there's a certain one that came in that you kind of did, decided to go towards. Who was that? So the story goes that I was on a coach um, coming back from a game against Godalming, Godalming Town. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I remember. and um, I'd, I'd had a stinker. Oh, wow. One of the only okay. games I didn't score in. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Gaffer pulls me to the front. The coach and says, Yo, um, <laughs> Vico, I'm going to offer for you. I'm like, Okay. It's like, Hastings United want to sign you. I said, Okay, wait. Like, they're in the same league as us. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to accept it. I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> what are you dealing what? with? Here? We're flying the top of the league. We're yeah, yeah. I ain't going nowhere. He's still yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's like, "Yeah, we're gonna accept it." And I'm like, "No, nah, Gaffer." Like he's proper got serious face as well. Goes, "No, we're gonna accept it." I'm like, "Gaffer, I'm not leaving. I don't care." He goes, "No, we need the club. Needs the money." Where I'm mm. like. I am not going. I'm having too much fun here. <laughs> I'm looking to hit fifty in the season. I'm saying I ain't going. He goes, oh, "Okay, I'm joking. I'm joking." Um, the club has come in from That's dope I That went, was dope yeah. That's a dope way to drop it still. I went Huh? <laughs> now you're definitely joking anyway. yeah, like, yeah. No You're going to chart on a Monday That's These dope times, wow. That's dope That's... I've had another Agent contact me And tell me that He's got South End Coming for me on Monday So okay. I'm like, so I've, The first thing I've done Is gone on the phone To the other agent And said Yo like, Gaffer just pulled me Chart on coming for me He's like No nah, I've got South End For you though Monday I said are you not listening? <laughs> Charlton in the Premier League have come in for me. You didn't believe him. I, I didn't believe who? You didn't believe the gaffer. I didn't believe the gaffer. I didn't believe him. I was like, they're in the Prem. Like, they got big boy players there. Mm-hmm. Like, there's big names at Charlton. Like, I'm seeing but, well, Alex Song, Kevin Lisby, Darren Bent. Man. Yeah. Oh, me? me? Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. Yeah. Like, what the hell do you want with me? Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, that so that week, like, I remember that's probably the only time I could probably say that I was actually a bit nervous mm-hmm. um, because I was like, I'm going into an environment that's new to me, mm-hmm. which wasn't the nervous part. It's nervous for it's an environment that's new to me that I know the people that I'm going into environment yeah. with. When you say new, sorry, sorry to, when you say new, just to, just on that point, that what do you mean new? Because you're already in a footballing setting. So I'm going into a professional football mm, setting. Yeah, yeah. I'm going into a Premier League setting and yeah. I'm going into a setting with players that I've only seen on television. Mm, yeah. Celebrities to you, basically. Yeah. Good. Good. How that, old was you at that point? So, so I was 22. Okay. So I was 22. I literally, um, yeah, just turned 22. And I remember just going, thinking to myself, tomorrow I'm going to be sitting next to Jimmy Fred Hasselbank. Mad. That's oh, mad. And, uh, That's mad. And um, I remember... I, uh, <laughs> And not just work experience. No, I mean, I'm, I'm on yeah, par with yeah, these yeah, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. here to sit down with them on par with proper. them. Yeah. I'm not just bringing man it's, water. It's you know what I mean? Proper. Um, and then I also remember, also remember just calling my work and saying, "I'm not coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coming." Hey, yeah. hey, listen to I me. won the lottery. That's a good conversation. <laughs> yeah, 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 a great conversation. Have I'm you not, seen that meme that's I'm going not, around? Yeah, the yeah I'm not calling. I'm yeah. going in. I need to say it face to face. How would you sit on the chair to tell them I'm done? It's bad yeah. Like, yeah, whatever. So I'm saying, mm. but I, I also remember thinking to myself, no, that, that was a week later. Mm. But just calling my manager and saying, mm. look, look, I'm not coming in. Um, I've been offered a trial at Charlton. And because obviously they'd spoken about me so much in the newspapers mm. and whatever, they knew something might possibly happen, but no one really actually thinks that's, that's mm. gonna happen of that magnitude yeah. as well. Please tell me it was the woman you, you had to <laughs> get to her. Oh. <laughs> that's, we gonna get to her. That's, that's, the week, that's the week later. We're gonna get to her. We're gonna get to her the week later. So um yeah, so that week I was on trial. Um we had a game on the Tuesday. Um and 
hadn't I'd met a few play people like on the Monday, they had a reserve game on the Tuesday against Fulham. Mm. Um, it couldn't have gone any better, if I'm honest. The only way mm. it could have gone better is I scored a hat trick. Yeah. But it couldn't have gone any better, literally. And I always say a salute to Kevin Lisby because he made my job so easy. He allowed mm. me to He's still a, he was a play, player. Mm. still play player. how I player. wanted to play, knowing that the way I played that game is how he usually plays his game. Mm, okay. He, he reverted to just coming, being the hold up man, coming short mm. and just said, look, you just run. Just keep going. And it's funny because now I play in, in like Vets games and it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. They go, I'm coming short, you yeah. just run. Yeah. So I literally, I just, I was able to express myself, play the game I, I normally play. Yeah. And I remember just Wayne coming up to me after the game, and like Wayne Burnett, my manager mm. of Dunnage and saying, never made that many runs for me. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, like, I've never seen so many runs. I was, yeah. like, I, was like, I was like, Gaffer, you know, like, I'm in a big time now. Yeah. I mean, I've got to show myself. But again, going back to the same entertainment factor, I'm okay. now in a, an environment where I'm overawed, I'm overwhelmed, mm. but I've got to present myself in a way where like, I want, I want, to, I want you to, to remember me. Mm, yeah. So it was entertainment again, but it was for me, it was, it, for me, I didn't see the business side of it. Mm-hmm. I wasn't watching that. I was just like, let's so so, so get another game. Mm. I'm going to put on a show. Yeah. I'm going to score some goals and see what it's comes out. It's another stage for you. To just, another just, stage. Yeah, That's it. Shut your stuff. So then literally mm. um, after the game, I scored two. Mm-hmm. I made one for Miles Weston. And then mm. um, um, Alan Pardew pulls me out of the changing room. And the man gave me the most aggressive handshake I've ever had in my <laughs> life. And he went, bang. I was like, I was like, Okay. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. That's what I wanted to see. That's what I wanted to see. I was like, see him, see you on Thursday. I'm <laughs> like, okay, we'll see you on Thursday. Cool, cool, cool. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Yeah. A good sign. But mm. again, I don't know what's coming in it. Yeah. So then um Thursday comes, go in on Thursday. Um, the agent, my new agent now comes in with me, Safe Ruby. Um, and he's obviously been with me the whole journey. But Safe comes in and and Safe is uh, if you know Safe, Safe, Safe. Always looking to punch higher. He's looking to punch higher. Listen, mm. we ain't coming in here for no one year contract. Mm. <laughs> so I'm like, charting off me in one year at first. And Safe's like, cool. And he told me directly, he said, I've gone in there and they were offered you one year. And I told them directly, if this guy smashes it up in the first year, I'm taking him somewhere else. So they're like, okay. Mm. You calling that bluff or is this, really, <laughs> is this guy really the hot ticket that he's making out to me? Yeah. Next thing I know, I don't know what else he said in that shit, in that, mm. in that, in that room. They come running out of a two year deal. <laughs> like this, waving the paper, waving the paper. And I'm like, and I'm like, what's that say? He's like, it's two years. <laughs> it's two years. Oh. It's, like, it's two years. Like, okay. Friday came. Um, I'll sign my deal on, on that Friday. Um, I believe I went in that Friday as well. Okay. This is the week later. Mm, yeah. <laughs> now, if you're honest, yeah, I wasn't smug. And I should have been. What? I should have been a lot more uh, smart. But it was a more of just a humbling experience. To say. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can understand that. Yeah, yeah, I can say, understand that. I've come in here. Um, you told everybody or everyone around that I was going to be here in a, in a year's time. And less than a year, I'm out of this. I'm saying, you going to be here. Yes, oh, <laughs> I'm but it was a, it, I, I didn't. I didn't oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't actually what I'd said. I yeah, went to the manager. Yeah, yeah, I went yeah. to the, the senior manager. Okay, and, and a lot of and a lot of people at Grat Brothers were yeah. um, Arsenal friends as well. So they mm. were like, "Oh, make sure you don't score against Arsenal." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking Charlton are in a relegation battle right now. Chill, we ain't going to worry about Arsenal. <laughs> but it was a case of look, they were just like proud, happy, like yeah. overwhelmed. They said, "Look, mm. if you need any help or anything." And um, obviously the woman wished me well as well, but mm. in my mind, that always stuck in the back of my mind that what you said, what you yeah. said, mm. I was going to be here in a year's time. Yeah. And it wasn't a case of, my motto in life has always been prove people wrong. Mm. Yeah. But I didn't have anything to prove to her. Mm. But it was just more a case of, I know I'm, I'm above I'm above this. Yeah. This isn't my environment. This isn't my stage. Yeah, okay. My, this, is mm. my, this is my nine to five. This is yeah. what I'm mm. going to do. But actually what I'm destined for and what I believe I'm... I'm, I'm Blessed and favoured for yeah. is something bigger than this. Of course. So of course. luckily yeah, it worked out that way. And um yeah, then Charlton. So talk to us about the first like week or maybe two weeks of training. You're like you said, you're now in a new professional setting, you're rubbing shoulders with Prem players. Yeah. What's that like? What's that how how is the young Chris Dixon approaching that? So I've walked in there 
as boisterous as I, as I come <laughs> in. I walked in there as like, luckily I knew a few people as well. Okay. So I knew, I'll say Sankofa. Mm-hmm. I knew Lloyd Sam. I okay. knew Miles Weston. Yeah. Um, I knew James Walker. So I was, I was, they, they just fedded me in. Nathan Ashton as well. Mm-hmm. So I knew them from the resi game, but I knew Miles from that like, school days. Mm-hmm. So it was easy to kind of come in there. But like, at the same time, I wasn't trying to be overawed by nobody. Jimmy stuck it on me a few times. That's okay. why I don't play games. That he, he made me made me know what time. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was at Brigman. I'm in the first team with you, bro. Like I'm not trying to be washing no one's boots. On I'm, not, I'm not a YT in it. Yeah. Like, I'm, in the, I'm in here with you. Is that what he's trying to get you to do? Nah, but he was just like, if, if I'm sitting in his seat, yo, that poor sweat. rank, yeah, 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 yeah. poor rank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, I ain't seen you. as a senior, I'm mm. just like, yeah, cool, cool, cool. That's your yeah, seat, no problem. Mm. And not to, not not to mention. I mean, don't get me wrong. Any senior, I'm gonna handle that way. But you're Jimmy Fred Hassel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me. If I'm if, if I'm in your seat, I'm stepping aside. Yeah, so yeah, cool, yeah. no problem. But it was just it was just on my side. He looked at me like you're the next generation, but I've mm. got to blood you in. I've got to yeah, see yeah. how tough mm. you are. Mm. Yeah. And and I'm a I'm I'm a hard crookie to crack anyway. So I'm saying. Yeah. So I was just like, listen, yeah. right, anything they throw at me, I'm just gonna bounce. It's just gonna bounce. I'm just gonna bounce with it and gonna keep going. Um and. It was, I remember the, I mean, I felt like I was getting that from all angles because Pardew did it in the first training session. First really? training session was mm. mad. Oh my God. So basically, we did a, a, a finishing drill, mm. but it was like the ball was coming from like four different angles. Uh. So one ball would come from there, then another ball would come from there, and you had to watch. And there, there's, there's me, I'm just like, I'm still like, taking in the surroundings. Yeah. Like, and I'm there chatting to, I think, Lloydie, me and Lloydie were cracking jokes. While the ball's coming in. Bro, while, while he's explaining the session. <laughs> oh, bro, so you don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. So me and Lloydie just chatting, chatting, chatting. Yeah. Bear in mind, Lloydie's probably done this session numerous times. Yeah, yeah. I ain't. Mm. So now, it's time for me and Lloydie's mm. going. I think it was me, I'm sure it was me and Lloydie. And I'm just doing that twirling around. Like, I'm moving around. I don't know what ball's coming in next. <laughs> Pardew stopped the session and said, hey, let's all laugh at a non-league player. <laughs> oh, oh, no. And I'm like, wow. 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 And I'm like, okay. I'm trying to crack me. Yeah. There was a lesson. Mm-hmm. There was yeah. a lesson to say, listen, be attentive yes. to what's going on all the time mm-hmm. because on in the game, you've got to be like that as well. So I'm saying, yeah. train as you play and play as you train. So yeah. I'm saying, so true. I was just sitting there, I was just like, rah, like, they really try to embarrass me. One thing I don't do well is embarrass me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I try and brush that off real quick. Mm-hmm. Like, so I'm saying, I was like, all right, cool, cool, cool. But in my mind, I was thinking, this guy. All eyes were on you at that point, didn't it? Oh, all eyes were full on me. And they all just started laughing and cracking jokes. I was like, that's the worst, you know. That's the worst. It burns. It burns. It burns. It burns. Me personally, I remember the one time it happened to me, my head was so hot, I couldn't do nothing else for the rest of the session. I couldn't control the ball. I couldn't yeah. do nothing for the rest. My <laughs> head was hot. It was mad. It was mad. And the exercise, it was not even I, I look at it now. The ex- exercise wasn't complicated. Yeah. But mm. I just wasn't watching. Yeah. I wasn't watching. I was too busy cracking jokes. I'm like, saying, like, <laughs> and then next thing you know, just, I'm just a lawyer, this is lawyer's gonna come in the story later as well. So I'm saying, but <laughs> it was mad. So yeah, literally, it was um, but it was again, it was a beautiful feeling to be amongst yeah. the players. And they welcomed me in as well. Like, okay. Don't know, Banner was flying. I remember I came in there on my boxer shorts, my essential boxer was from Primark. And then, <laughs> man like, and then man were like, never again. <laughs> I was at, I had my Lynx Africa spray. Jerome Thomas stuck it on me. Yeah, man, yeah. threw my boxes away mm. and said, let me, let me not see that Lynx Africa here. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with Lynx Africa? They dashed it in the bin. What's wrong with Lynx Africa? Oh, that in, nah, at that on. level, mm. them man, no, no, them man, man, I'll still be repping Lynx Africa. Them man spray the women's thing, innit? Because the women's thing's more like, mm. it smells better than the yeah, man's yeah, thing. Yeah. I'm saying. So mm. like, sure, Dove, I said, let me not see that next Africa ever again. That's right. Bro, oh, trust me, even my wash bag had to change real quick. That's oh my God. <laughs> that wash bag goes quicker than it was <laughs> different. It was different. It, the whole the whole thing was just that. Had you even started different. getting that Premier League pay yet before the decimal Bro, were I was nowhere near there, man. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And then obviously we had so what happened was obviously because I signed in March. Okay. I didn't sign in January. I signed in March. So because I got injured in January, and then and that was that was probably one of my biggest regrets that I didn't sign in January or wasn't able to sign in January because I was yeah. injured. Um, so then come March, it's outside the transfer window, I can't officially sign or I can officially sign for the club but I can't play in the Premier League. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I, outside the window. I read about that and I was going to ask so you about that. I was ready. I was, we we applied for it but FA, FA just said no. It's like I can play in the reserve Premier League yeah. games. So I was like, okay, that'll do that. Mm. Then that again is my new stage. Mm. 
You're still smashing it. Though. Every game Come I on. scored. Every That's game, dope, every man. game I scored. The Portsmouth, Arsenal, didn't matter who it was. I just scored. I remember my first, my first game. I think was Portsmouth. I scored four. <laughs> and, one of them, and Jimmy played up front with me. Is it? Oh. Bro, and I, I scored a Hattie, and then now my fourth one. I think he's even online somewhere still. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so my fourth one, I picked up from like just inside our, just inside their half, mm. and I've just weaved through like one player, two players, three players, and Jimmy's out there, out <laughs> wide, and he's looking at me saying. I need to score to get back in the first team, innit? Yeah. And I'm looking at it, yeah. I can see. And I'm thinking, bro, I'm gonna, I've scored a hat I'm about to get another one. And I shot Phew. that the box. The shot wasn't even good. It was like a tame shot. Oh. Which it into the bottom corner. Mm-hmm. Everyone's going to me, yo, 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 celebrating. Jimmy I, I remember Darren Bent was in the stands at the time. Okay. Darren Bent was like, clapping his hands and yeah. everything. And then Jimmy's come up to me. If you miss that. <laughs> If you miss that <laughs> shot, <laughs> yeah, that's that's you know. <laughs> and he just and he just gave me a handshake. Yeah. And he like say, oh, I'll let you off this one. I'll let you off this one. But I was thinking oh, to myself, this guy yeah. on to me. But oh, literally, it was that. But that again, yeah. every game, just that I just kept on just going from Dulwich from the from the from the reserve yeah. um, trialist game. I just mm. kept on kicking on. Said, look, I just got to keep scoring, and that was it. And 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 then. Unfortunately, we got relegated that year. Yeah. And that kind of like set me back as much as I think even if I'd stayed in the Prem, I would have at least gone and loan to maybe a championship club or got league one. Yeah. Maybe yeah, league yeah, one yeah, as well. Yeah. But because we got relegated, it was like, okay, cool. Now you're definitely going to leave one. Because they want to get back up. Because they want to mm-hmm. get back Proven. up. And they've got to bring players in. They know they're about to lose all their big boys. All yeah. their big names will go back to guard the window. And I mm-hmm. remember the next season, just going to the car park. And everything had changed. Is it? Bro, wow. You don't have your space anymore. <laughs> nah, I've got, gone from Escalades to Bentleys. To, um, suddenly there's, I mean, only a little downsize, but yeah, it's like, it's there's like the same, P7s man. and um, Golfs and they're not really like, <laughs> no, so, you know, there's, 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 there's different, there's different like, the whips have yeah. gone down. Yeah, yeah. from kitting out like, over like, pitches to, to bro, golf. Bro, the man that were coming in a different car every day, yeah, now yeah. coming in at one car. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. And I was like, okay, uh, okay. And things just changed yeah. massively. When you get relegated wow. from Premier League, it's different. It hits every single level of the club. See, that's interesting. Yeah, right? very because interesting. The fan, the normal fan will just think wages and mm. they just think, oh, players leave and that's yeah. it. They don't mm. know about behind the screen, behind yeah. the fourth wall, yeah. as they say. The kitchen. The, the, I remember we used to go in and I used to, I used to, listen, I used to love going into breakfast. And it's like, rah, there's no, there's no chef. <laughs> chef, wow. chef, like, chef, you used to go in early just to go for breakfast and then yeah. go to the gym and whatnot. Mm. It's like, wow, like, and you're seeing people that you're thinking, why are these people not here no more? Again, I'm new to this. Yeah. They've lost their job. Yeah. They've lost their jobs because mm. ultimately, the money's the same, mm. there's no money. Mm. So it was just like, yeah, it was, a, it was a different, it was a, again, transitional period. And then just seeing the players that were going out and then the players that are coming in. And I'm thinking, wow, like, this is mad. <laughs> That's a madness. And, and <laughs> the thing is, some of the players that were coming in, there was very, very good players that came in, like Vlatisar Todorov, Andy Gray. Mm. Um, but Fraser Richardson was another one that came in. But the players that were coming in were maybe coming to the end of their careers or they weren't like key figures in their, their mm. previous clubs. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, like, don't get me wrong, they're still good players. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it was just a case of we've gone from the Darren Bents to the and the Andy Reeds, yeah. like big boy, big names, I'm saying, mm. to suddenly we've got big names, but they're not they're not necessarily reputable. filling you with enough confidence to say they're not reputable Premier League yeah, names, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. big names in yeah. the Premier League. Um, but for me, it was a get again, it was a case of cool, like now I'm gonna get my chance. That's yes. how I looked at yeah, it. Yeah, Especially yeah. with your record as well, banging in the goals for the reserves. Mm. I would have thought you got a chance. what you'd feel, you'd think that. Mm. But one thing I didn't have on my side that the players that did come in had on sides, they got league football. Mm. Yeah. That experience. Yeah. They got mm. league football. And because they had league football, they, they already had a one-up on you. Okay. And then you're signing players for two million, two and a half million. And it's like, okay, now they got figures as well. And figures is a big deal. It's just, the whole game's about business and figures and them men are going to play ahead of me definitely because we pay big money for this yeah. because they have mm. to play mm. and yeah so then I found myself in a situation where I was like okay what am I going to do now and I apologies said I'm going to send you alone okay 
said, okay, cool. I said, I've got three clubs for you. I said, Gillingham, Millwall, <clears throat> Crew. <laughs> Why did you choose I, Crew? I'm a London guy. Yeah. I've seen everything in South London. I ain't that's seen you... nothing outside of London. Oh, so, okay. so I was like, let's go and see what Crew's about. Wow, that's a jump. Um, so you didn't have to choose between like who's offering the most money, wages, anything. Just... Charlton, we're going to handle all of that. It was okay. a case of, we just need to go out and go and play football because mm. we're not going to play here. Okay. Because the players are yeah. in. Yeah. So I was like, cool. Let's go Crew. Let's see what Crew's about. I didn't know what Crew was. Mm. <laughs> all I knew Crew was bar. Bar. Yeah. Yeah. All I knew bar. was bar. I didn't know what Crew was. I didn't know what Crew was. about the Crew. Yeah. I just knew that it was up north and I heard it's near Manchester. So I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't um, Dario. Dario Grady. Dario Grady was... Like the sporting director, or something okay, like that. Okay. But the manager was Steve Holland, who's now yeah, yeah. the England assistant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. So um, right. he um he was a uh, yeah. So I went up there, and <laughs> truth be told, I went for uh, it was a jolly up. But when when did you go up there? Did you go up there at the beginning of the season? Because you didn't really play much games, from did you? I I went there at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I went yeah. to the beginning of the season. So literally, it was near the beginning of the season, and yeah, it was it was. <laughs> I just wanted a different experience. I'd seen London. I, I, I knew about Millwall. I knew about Gillingham. I didn't really know about Crew. Okay. Let's see what this is mm. all about. And um, just going up there, very different. So bearing in mind, I've played. I've, I've been training with Premier League players. Yeah. I'm now in the Championship, but I'm still playing with Premier League players. Yeah. And I go to Crew. Cars must have been hella different now, but Cars were. Cars were very different. Cars yeah. were very different. Cars were very different. <laughs> golfs were the top yeah. thing. <laughs> 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 the more than anything, it was like, as I'm there complaining about the chef. Yeah. Bro, this is a crew. Yeah. It's not that. No, yeah. no, no, don't worry about chef. Yeah. <laughs> don't get me wrong. We still, we still managed to employ a chef at Charlton. Yeah. But obviously, it just wasn't, he wasn't providing what we were mm. having before. Yeah. Now, a crew. No, 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 no. See, when you go to m and Oh, oh, no, what I I said, you got the pasta and bacon. I swear. Oh, okay. You just gave that to you. Oh, that's what was, you're getting served that and some bread, bread roll and that. Bread bread roll. Was, no. it, was, it was different. Mm-hmm. It was very different. And where we were, tra- even when we were training, I was like, what kind of surroundings <laughs> is this? Because this is feeling like a train, like, like a park. Oh, I was like, this is mad. <laughs> <laughs> and so oh, don't know disrespect to crew. So I'm saying, mm. that's like, like, listen, they do their thing, whatever, their football yeah. club, and they have to do their thing. Yeah. But it was just, for me, it was just like, where I'd come from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd come from the big time, innit? Like, yeah, yeah, rubbing yeah, yeah, shoulders yeah. and big boy players. And now, like, I'm here. The players at crew are very good, but it's just like the surroundings. It's like, whoa. Mm. And it was like, almost felt like, you know what? You're back at a non league kind of environment. Mm, okay. so I'm saying you're back on the grass. Now, the benefit for me is, and through and through life, is I worked before I was, before yeah, I was a professional yeah, yeah. footballer. Yeah, yeah. So now in football, I've seen the big time, but I've actually played non league. Yeah. So I can, I can mm. adapt to this. Yeah. yeah. I just didn't want to adapt to it. Uh, like crew. Uh, uh, I, I was like, I'm in the big time. Let me behave like I'm in the big time. And because of that, that's why my London didn't work out crew. Okay. Because I approached it completely wrong. I was totally in the wrong. I took a full responsibility because I found myself doing madnesses. Like I would, I would, I would finish training and go and go and go back to London. That's mad. <laughs> then I drive back to prison. How long is how, wow. how long does it take to That's get from crew? Three, three, three and a half, half hours. hours. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And then I come back, come back to crew because I was staying in the hotel at the time. And then after the game on a, on a Saturday, I'm in Manchester. Or I'm in Leeds. Or I'm in Liverpool. Yeah, I'm enjoying life. Very read up. I'm out. Yeah, <laughs> outside. outside. Yeah, as these kids say, as the kids yeah. say, I'm outside. <laughs> but yeah, I was, I was, I was outside, and and I and I didn't take. It, I took it for granted. Mm. I took it for granted. Mm. Um, so when I came, I got I got let um, let go. I was on a month loan. I got let go after three weeks. Really? Wow. Uh, was that that's, quick? You must have been that's really outside. Really outside. <laughs> 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 three weeks. I, outside. <laughs> I, I, I could have done a month. I would have got away with it. I'm not that bad. <laughs> like, like, yeah. It was mad. I didn't score any goals. Um, you only played three games. I didn't even look. I was gonna score. You didn't look like you was gonna score. Yeah, no, I was gonna score. Do you think they knew what what you was doing? You think they actually was keeping tabs on you and actually. As in Charlton or Crew? Char- either, either, either. Crew didn't know anything. Crew wouldn't have known anything, but Char- Crew was just thought, who's this dud that Charlton has signed that was yeah. sent to us? Yeah. And Charlton are thinking, what's going on? Because this guy's done a madness mm. and now uh, what's going on? And I 
came back to Charlton and I got dashed back to Charlton. <laughs> oh, so was it a cruise decision to end loan? Yeah. Or, oh, okay. 100%. 100%. They just said, they, they brought in Lee Barnard, mm. scored in his debut, and that was it. I knew that was it. Yeah, he's done. Put the right yeah. on the wall. Put the right ones on the wall. I saw him bend it. But I said, yep, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what time, well, I was thinking, where am I going out tonight? Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause where, laughs> evidently, it ain't going to yeah. be, ain't gonna be here. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, um, came back and then that was the sternest, in, um, yeah, I say interview, sternest conversation I had. Was that with Pardew? Pardew. Swear. Mm. He gave it to me. He said, I don't know what you've been doing out there. But you have not represented yourself or the club how we know you can. Damn. And I gave you the option to go to one of these three clubs. The next choice isn't going to be your choice. Ooh. He said to me, I could send you to Millwall, but if you do what you did at Crew at <laughs> Millwall, <laughs> they're not so nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, you knew that before, didn't they'll, they'll let you know. He's basically yeah. telling me, listen, you're a black boy and you'll get you'll get taken out down there. Wow. <laughs> you did at Crew. Wow. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> And wow, it was, and it was real. Yeah. Taken out, it yeah. was real because it was just like you know what? I can't. I'm not gonna send you to, um, throw you to the wolves. So you're going jilling them. So now I'm like, cool. I've been given my little slap on the wrist. Mm. I've been I've been told go and do go and show us what mm. you can really do. And that's when I just activated. Jilling them was good for you, man. Very good. Didn't start good though. Didn't didn't start good. So what was interesting is that I had uh, they them had an interim manager at the time. Okay, Ify and Nora, and how can I? Explain? <laughs> the whole back thing. That didn't mean to Bell, man. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah. Did he um, play for... Yeah, he plays, yeah. Legend Who did he play Jules. for again? Yeah, he played yeah, for yeah. Jules. He played, he played for a few clubs, but he's actually on the FA now as well. So, but he's... I swear he's from Scotland. Sorry, I know he's, he's got some know. mad accents. Mm. Like a northern accent. Mm. But if he didn't like me much. I don't feel <laughs> if he liked me because I came into Jules. Again, I'm, I'm always going to be bouncy positive, so I'm saying. Yeah. But mm. I came in from Jules with that aura of I'm coming from Charlton. And as far as everyone's aware, Charlton's still a Premier League club, mm-hmm. even though they've been relegated to yeah. Championship. So who's this kid that's coming in thinking who hasn't played any league games or played three league games mm-hmm. down at crew and ain't done nothing? Like, who's this kid? So he didn't play me for the first three games. So I travelled with him. I remember well, we got smoked at night in the Forest 5 1, tried to throw me in there, <laughs> got smoked somewhere else. <laughs> and then we were getting, they were getting peppered every week. Mm-hmm. Jones again, we were just getting turned apart. And then he, um, had, we had a Johnson's paint trophy game and he had no choice but to he just I'm going to give all the boys that haven't had a run out mm. give them a run out mm. we're playing Luton Town mm. imagine Luton Town yeah I'm crazy so, that's mad um, and said go I'm going to play you even my man changed out like, the formation and everything it's like he was just like trying to thrust thrust <laughs> <laughs> into the wilderness <laughs> say just make up your own thing in it <laughs> <laughs> but that game was got a hat trick hmm. okay and that was my first um like, yeah, professional goals. Okay. Mm. Um, and literally, it was a case of, I remember just going to the forums afterwards and seeing all the people saying, we've had this guy all this time. Yeah, we're we're getting that. peppered every week and we're not using it. It's not from Charlton. What's going on? Mm. From that moment onwards, I remember, I think the next game was Millwall. Mm. Drew on one squad. Probably should have got a winner as well. And then, from that moment, but from that moment, it was, I'm playing every game. And then a new manager came in, Mark Stimson. And literally, just every game, Dicko, you're playing, you're playing, you're playing, you're playing. There wasn't a game I didn't play. And mm. I remember I got 11 in four or something like that. And then, Shit. and that was like three months. And and then Charlton called me back. And I remember that conversation with Pardew as well. A better mm. conversation or so. something. Yeah, different. <laughs> yeah, different. Very different. different. <laughs> I, ain't gonna lie. I thought I was going to get a new deal. Like, I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. You know, like, another year. Yeah. So, but now he was just like, yeah, that's the dicko I know. So I'm saying. And um, and then he started infiltrating me into the first team picture a bit more. And then the uh, injury. Uh, and yeah. that was the stumbling block, the massive stumbling block. So I, I I remember coming to well going to watch Charlton, and you you got brought on. I can't remember who it was against, and I was gonna I was gonna say was that I was, I was gonna ask was that before, but if I can't remember the timelines, it's, it's kind of punished. But after that injury, what happened? Like, what was the what was your what was your place like? What was your status within the team? Like, did you come back in and work your way in, or was it from there you just so prior to that injury, I got I got. In, in the FA Cup game 
and my squad against West Brom. Mm-hmm. And then went to penalties. I went extra time. I tore West Brom apart. <laughs> and then went to penalties. I scored my penalty. A couple of other men missed. And then we went out. And then um, I remember, <clears throat> hard you, there was whispers going around that I was going to start with playing Stoke. And there was whispers going around that I was going to get a start. And I walked into a hotel where we were staying. And as I walked into the hotel room, or hotel, hotel reception, we used to just like banter each other and everything and try and put our tracksuits down each other's back and trainers yeah. and do stupidness. Word Sam. <laughs> oh my mm. God. Comes up behind me, he's trying to put my tracksuit in the back of my, in the back of my trainer. I turn around, I, said, I, I bagged him in, I said, what are you doing? And as I've turned, oh, hot. Jeez. That's oh. where my knee went. So people think well, I got injured on the pitch or I got injured mm. training. Like, I got injured Damn. literally at the Radisson Blue Hotel in Canary Wharf. That's oh, mad. Madness. 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 And they say it's better that it happened there than it happened on the pitch. Yeah. But then, obviously, I'm on my way to, to the hospital to have mm. surgery and I wake up in the morning, chart on one Stoke nil. Who scores? Lloyd. Oh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> hey. wow. Wait, nah. he must have felt hella guilty though. Mm. No, nah, he, he, he very because me and Lloyd are boys. It's mm. banner, but he must have yeah. felt some kind yeah, of... Yeah, there must have been I think he just didn't know how deep it was. Yeah. Like, I'd mm. done my conjure defect, so it, my knee was gone. Uh, like, literally, it was, big, it was a big wow. problem. I was out for five months. But... Right. And then, so when I saw it, I was, I was buzzing for him because I was like, yes. Yeah. But obviously, the fact that I then got pulled and, told, and was told that I was going to start that night, yeah. it was just like, Jesus. Mm. But saying that, it might have happened on the pitch. It mm. might have, yeah. It might have mm. happened on the pitch. And they said if it happened on the pitch, it'd probably been worse because my stud would have got caught in the ground or something oh. like that. Whereas me just walking and turning, it was probably better that it happened then. Had, had you had that injury before? Is that Never. the injury you had when I first met you? Never. What, was, what injury was that when I, when I first met you? If you remember. Um, probably my foot. It's probably not like my broken metatarsal. Remember, metatarsal was a big deal when yeah, like Beckham done it. Yeah, that's probably what it was. Because I, I was in a cast. Yeah, I was in a yeah. boot cast. I was in a boot. And yeah, so it was just like one of them ones. I was in one of them boots, innit? But yeah, that's when I had that. But my knee. Never, Jeez, I never had any man. issues with my knees or anything. I mean, conju- I mean, what did I have? I had Osgood Slatteris when we were younger or something. Osgood Slatter, whatever they call it. But I never really had no, no problems. And literally just walking and turning. But after the injury, yeah, so... um. Rehab, rehab was rehab was was good. Rehab yeah. was very good, but again, I've never been injured to this magnitude. So it's like I'm not taking rehab that seriously. Yeah. I just don't think okay. it's that big of a deal. Mm. As far as I'm concerned, I've hurt myself. Okay, I'll be back in a bit. When they're telling me I've had an op, I need to I need to chill. I need to like I heal mm. properly. I'm like. Well, I'm seeing this. I got time off. In it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I, I was outside of crutches. I was like, I was like look, I, man never called me saying, "Lady, as well." I was like, yo, I'm going to a spot doing a roll, and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm coming." Yeah. I see. So I'm like, "Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm in Leicester Square like this." Yeah. I'm sure, I saw you at one of Albert's drinks. But probably, right? <laughs> I was out. I was okay. out. But um, but yeah, then no, but then when I got to the back end of rehab and I started realizing that this actually could is actually a big deal. Mm. And obviously the physio explaining to me, listen, you get another one of these on your other knee, you're finished, you're done, your, your career's over. Wow. So because Limbwear Primus had one. Mm. So I was like, right, cool. So I started taking it a bit a lot more seriously. But at the same time, I was building up power. I was building up upper body power. I was mm. like, I was in the gym a, a little bit more than, than I usually would be, but more than anything, I was building up strength in my legs. I just knew that. I didn't want to lose my speed. Yeah. I was like, I'm mm. quick. That's one thing that I've got on my side. I don't want to lose my speed. And then when I got to the back end of um, my, my rehab and um, Jerome, it was pre-season and Jerome Thomas came in and and um, Errol, who's my phys- who the physio was, was like, look, um, <laughs> let's test you out. So Jerome's coming fresh off the whole, off a trip to Marbella or something like that. <laughs> He's like, and Errol's like, Dicko, we need to race Jerome. Jerome's like, Bro, this injured <laughs> cripple let's just come back from injured. Like, no way. And I'm like, no, no, let's go, Jay. Let's go. Mm-hmm. So Dick, I'll come on, man. Let's stop using something stupid. And Jay's one of the, <laughs> Jay's one of the quicker Jay's ones. Quick, yeah. team, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But in my mind, I'm thinking, how long is this going to be? How far is this distance? And if if he's not five to 10 yards ahead of me after 10 yards, because I felt good. I felt powerful. Mm-hmm. I'm catching you and I'm blitzing you. I tell you, yeah, we had that race was unbelievable. <laughs> I him out. Really? And he was like, oh man, I just come off a boat, bro. I'm in Marbella. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's obviously that's what happened. And I was like, nah, nah, nah. But then even when I was coming back and I was getting infiltrated into the team, into the group and everything now, 
we had another big race as well in preseason. So there was Yasin Muto Akio, Rob Elliott, the goalkeeper. I just used there for banner. I think, <laughs> I think Lee Varney as well was in it. And myself. Mm. And um, and Pardew said all the coaches had a bet in it. So Pardew bet on Yasin to win. And that like, made it openly clear. Like, told everyone, yep, Yasin's winning. Yep, Yasin's winning. And all the men in them were like, and Jerome, especially because he's seen me already. Mm. Jay's like, watch Dicko. Just watch Dicko. And I felt like a picture on my Instagram where I was like, cycling shoes on a topless. I backed off all my guards. Like, <laughs> this is about to be on. I've got right. to let Pardew know that I'm back in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was, was going to say, you reckon you're so fast because you might have to race him on the side. <laughs> 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 nah, you might have a few years on me. <laughs> but yeah, no, I just mm. said, I've got to show Pardew I'm back. Yeah. And this is my time to show him, innit? Mm. Just a simple race. Mm. Like, the ball come later. So I remember when we had that race and I and I remember I was like this. You've seen the picture, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and then literally at the line I just dipped. Mm. <laughs> and everyone was like, oh, blah, 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 blah. all the boys, all the man never come to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was just like, nah, I think it was a draw. Was a draw. Nah, yeah, everyone was like, no, yeah. dick on one. <laughs> like, I was like, I told you on the far side of the club, I told you I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> These times I'm nowhere near the first team right now. So I'm saying, I'm real. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, no, but it was um. It was just, it just, it just showed me and and a massive shout out to Errol because Errol actually took me through that whole journey with mm-hmm. physio and he's been my physio ever since. Like anytime I've had any injury anywhere, Errol. Okay. So That's literally, cool. yeah. So it was just um in yeah, but then I got inf- infiltrated back into the team. But again, the Pardew got sacked. Uh, okay. So when Pardew got sacked, Parkinson took over. Now, funnily enough, Parkinson was actually part of the reason as to why I signed for Chon because he was the one that was overseeing and, look, and mm. sending people to, to watch me at Dulwich. Mm. So, and then obviously when I went chilling him, again, he was the one that's saying, like, we've got to bring Dicko back. So when he got the job, I thought, wow, I'm going to give him a chance. Of course, yeah. That's what I'm mm. saying. And, credit to him, he did give me my chance. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't even say that I wasn't up to it. It wasn't a case I wasn't up to it. I just feel like the team was so down in self-esteem mm. that we just wasn't up to it. We wasn't mm. like we we I think that season we were top of the league up until Christmas and then we just dropped. Ended up finishing like ninth or something. Wow. And everyone thought we were gonna win the league. Easy. Mm. Christmas, we were like, yep, yeah, we're going back to the Prem. And just <sighs> plummeted. And then obviously that's when Pardew went in and Parkinson took over and obviously gave me my, my opportunity. I could have done more to take it, maybe, but I think, I mean, I had a couple of assists, did score, but it was a case of, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show you that mm. I'm ready, but it was like, no, nah, I'm going to keep leading them to the players that we've still got mm. and the ones we've paid for and we'll see. But I was watching them, man. I'm thinking, this man has a chance. You can do a bit mm. <laughs> Bring me in. It got to a point where I'm like, I'm seeing fans in the stands saying, there's only one Chris Dixon, one Chris. I'm like, can't you hear that? Bro? Like, put me <laughs> in. Did you go to his office to say say anything? Or just... Many a time. And that's, when, that's, when, that's when our relationship deteriorates. Oh, okay. Because I then got to a point where I was like, I want to go on loan again. Mm. Got, if you're not using me, let me go. Mm. Let me go on loan. And um, I ended up going to Bristol Rovers. Mm-hmm. Again, it started very well. Mm. Far. Not that far. Not, Not that, that far, far, but but a different again, a different city. Yeah. And it made me realize that actually I need to be closer to home. Mm. Because when I'm closer to home, <laughs> I get out to less trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm closer to home, I get out to less trouble. You put me outside. Mm. You're outside. I'm outside. Free rain. <laughs> <laughs> it's free rain. <laughs> and, and at that point as well, yeah, I was, yeah, I I I'd reached my like, tether in regards to I wanted to be playing for Charlton so badly okay. and I felt like I'm not getting my, my fair, a fair mm. opportunity and I'm going to all these different, different places to try and prove myself. I actually just want to be at Charlton and prove and show what I can do mm. here. And then, and yeah, I'll just, I, I started well at Bristol Rovers, but it got a great connect, um, connection with Joe Kufo and then I just found myself just I was in a hotel. They didn't report your contract again, did they? No, no, no. They kept me for three months. Oh, okay. so they, they kept me for three would months. Would you say it's that homesickness that kind of contributed to that, as well as wandering eye? 
wondering, <laughs> wondering, wondering, wondering now. I wanted to uh, when I'm outside of, of London, I want to see what's going on. I want mm. to see what's what's here, where to go. And you need to get familiar with the city you're in anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But I was getting too familiar. Mm. Like, and <laughs> by doing that, by doing that, it's a detriment to myself because ultimately, by if I'm if I'm out on Thursday and then Friday I'm trying to regroup, by Saturday, I might not perform at the, at the level I should be performing. Mm. And I, and again, that's comes with experience. You learn that literally when you play like on a Saturday, you don't actually feel it on Sunday. You might feel it a little bit. Monday, you gonna feel it. Mm-hmm. Monday, you feel it. That's why that's why a lot of a lot of Monday sessions in, in training at pro level is intense. It's mm-hmm. hard. Tuesday's a little bit less. And then you have a day off on Wednesday because they know Monday is gonna hit you on Wednesday. And then by mm-hmm. Thursday, you're back in again. Mm-hmm. Go again. Then Friday, cool, chill, shape, whatever, Saturday game. Mm-hmm. So the two days after. Is when it kicks in, mm. and so I'll be out on Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Like, what, what man's in Bristol doing the tinkers? And then Friday, oh, I didn't feel that, but Saturday, I'd feel it. Mm. And Saturday, Saturdays when you that's, that's showtime. Mm-hmm. That's that's just what it's about. And initially, like I said, when I signed for Bristol Rovers, adrenaline was pumping. I had a point to prove, so that's why probably I think I scored about four and or three or four in the first that few games. Mm. And then obviously, as time went on, I was like. Okay, I'm still outside trying to see what's going on. Um, and yeah, it took its toll. It took its toll. And again, I was probably my own worst enemy in that scenario. But the thing that was nagging me was the Charlton thing. Yeah. So is was it is this where your loans start happening? Or was it a case of uh, I've gone to Bristol, I've come back, I've got back into the team, or you know, what happened? Went to at Gillingham that point? Again, it? After I went, I went to Gillingham again. Okay. That's when me and Parkinson proper broke down. Oh wow! Because okay. I was like, I want to leave now because you're not going to play me. You're mm-hmm. not going to give me a chance to showcase what I want to do here. So I want to actually leave. Yeah. And I was I handed in a transfer request. I think there was one incident where, like, they, they the first team went away. They had an away game, but they were traveling on a Friday. I trained on a Thursday. There was a list put on the door, but I didn't see the list. I genuinely didn't see the list. So I thought, okay, they might have traveling on Thursday or, or Friday morning. There's no training then because there's only like the, the leftovers that are going to be left on Friday. <laughs> the leftovers. Straight. <laughs> yeah. The side teams, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, so I was like, okay, so I didn't go training on yeah. Friday. And then I get a call in the afternoon. Where was you? I'm like, I'm at home. I'm like, and they're thinking I'm trying to be petulant. Like I'm yeah. trying to, mm. I'm, I'm like, I'm not trying to be a rebel. I'm, I'm at home. I didn't, your name was on the list. I'm like, my name wasn't on any list. I'm like, your name was on the list. These times my name was on the list. But I didn't see it. What, to travel? To go to the game? No. Or to, to go training to training? On, okay. on the Friday. Mm. My name was on the list. I just didn't see the list because I was fuming mm. that I wasn't in the squad. Mm. So I just walked out and I didn't see anything. So next thing I know, obviously, I had to hold a fan for that. And he just, and that was it. it was just, everything was just coming on top. And it was one thing after another. And I was like, then he sent me on long to chill him again. Now I'm going to loan Gillingham thinking, yeah, back where, back where, I'm, where I'm loved. Mm. But the second loan to Gillingham wasn't the same as the first loan to Gillingham because I was brought to Gillingham for me for the wrong reasons. Or for different reasons. Not necessarily wrong. It was more a case of to give Simeon Jackson a kick out the backside as opposed to, Dicko, you're going to come back and be the main man mm. again. And when I came, as soon as I came back, Simeon started snapping in goals again. Yeah. So it's like, can Dicko and Simeon play together? Similar kind of player, both playing the shoulder. Mm. Doesn't really work. One's got to play, one's not got to play. And then that was it. So literally the second loan was that and then my deal was up by the end of the season. So from that point, so I don't, I'm a little cautious of time. I don't, I, and as much as we'd love to chat and see. <laughs> there might chat. need to be a part two. Yeah, yeah, there no, no, there <laughs> might need to be because <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. We obviously, we had a we had a kind of schedule on how this was going to run, but I'm just sitting there listening to you and there's so many stories. Story mm-hmm. there, yeah. And it's just, and and you're so engaging, right? Mm-hmm. And the way you talk about things. So it's like, I'm just listening yeah. and, and, and hearing a lot of things because it was the same with Miles and, and with Liam. You, you get these little tidbits and mm-hmm. gems and you've clearly got a big story to tell. So mm-hmm. it's just like, I just don't, I want to make sure we get as much as we can. Yeah. Um, so from Charlton, you said your deal's up. How long is it before you end up going abroad? Or, you know, what happened in that period? Pretty much immediately. Okay. So I, um, 
You've gone from outside to going out, out, outside. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so I remember, about, I yeah. the offers I was getting to stay in UK were outside of okay. London. Mm. And I wanted to be here. So, but again, where was I going to go to? A palace, um, a QPR. Like, I wasn't getting them offers. Yeah. I wasn't getting them offers. And I remember um, Lenny Lawrence was the assistant manager at Bristol Rovers. So he called safe and said, look, there's a team in Cyprus that are looking for a striker. Mm. The strikers safe said, Dicko, like, Dicko might want to say that. Mm. I was like, Cyprus? What kind of football is Cyprus? <laughs> 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 I thought you went Turkey first. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No. Everyone's always Turkey. I never went Turkey. What's Cyprus. that? Wait, is that Iron Apple? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. You see why yeah. I went there? You see the one doing that? No, no, no. He's like, he's like, what? He's he's like, what? Straight away. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the island for? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know nothing about no Ian Apple. I swear to you, I didn't know nothing about Ian Apple. But when I was speaking to other boys, I'm speaking to other boys and I'm saying, yo, the team from Cyprus coming for me. They're going, what? Ian Apple? And I'm like, what's Ian Apple? Yeah. I literally did not know anything about Ian Apple. I knew about Marbella. Okay. Because we've gone there on numerous pre seasons. But I just didn't know about Ian Apple. So he said Cyprus. I was like, who kicks ball in Cyprus? <laughs> mm. Like, what? So I said, all right, cool, cool, cool. Let's go and check it out. Mm. So I've gone over there. Um, and at first I was like, whoa, this is like such a different world to me. So in UK, as a professional footballer, you have people expect you to live up to some sort of like, like energy or some sort mm. of... It's very it's pretentious. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It, so... You're a professional footballer, you got a big car, you got a nice apartment, you got a nice watch, you got better trainers. That's what it oh, is. Oh, the whole lifestyle of it. Mm-hmm. Cyprus, if you're a professional footballer, we don't care. Mm. We know why you're here. Mm. Just make sure you do the job for us. <laughs> That's it. So mm. I'm like, well, like, okay, cool. But I went out there thinking every every football club's the same. Mm. So when I pull up and I'm like, you know, I'm gonna need to my car from UK over to here right and the man's like no you're not doing that because you're not going to undermine our, our club or our, our manager or uh-huh. anything and I'm looking at the cars that are pulling up <laughs> no this is definitely yeah. <laughs> 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 what's up with it Opal 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 at that point, obviously, I signed a new deal with Charles before yeah, that. Yeah. So I, I, got, I upgraded whip straight away. Mm. So I got the Q7. So I'm like, yeah. I, I'm like, I'm, I'm bringing my car over. Mm. And they're like, no, you're not. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, cool. What are you giving me? Yeah, yeah we've got, got a car for you. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got a car for you, big man. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, yeah. Mm. The car they gave me, <laughs> they gave me a Nissan Micro. <laughs> I swear to God. I swear to God. I went, what? I looked at it when they pulled up and I said, I said, you don't got me battery, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know hey. what? <laughs> it was the, exactly what I needed. Yeah. It was okay. exactly what I needed because I got to a stage in the UK where I got sucked into mm. that life with the flashy car. It's flashy a bubble, this. isn't it? It's a mad bubble. It must I be a mad got bubble. Sucked in. You get sucked into it, even like oh, going back to when I was at Erif and that's the girl I was with and yeah. who I'm seeing now, what I'm seeing, yeah, it was yeah. different. Yeah. So I was like, raw, like this is exactly what I need. I need mm. a humbling experience, mm. and and I, and I almost felt like I needed to get back to me, mm. the mm. rawness of who I am, yeah. the realness of who I am. So I'm saying because I got sucked into the lights. So when I went out there, I mean, I did push for the car to come over, <laughs> but they weren't having none of it. Um, <laughs> and literally, I just remember walking up, seeing my teammates coming like for training and stuff. And the man wearing flip flops, shorts, vests, mm. anything. I'm like, what? I'm like, well, you man ain't rocking out that. They're the CKs on the CK mm. boxes. Mm. That's the same. <laughs> I'm like, you man ain't rocking no like, fresh caps on that. Like, <laughs> like, like, Websites, I don't know. G Star was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, you man ain't got a G Star G's. What's good? And literally, is exactly what I needed. It was just okay. a humbling experience and exactly what I needed. And I remember, so I went there to look, see what was going on, came back and I'd made my decision. I was going 100%. Mm. And then I got on the plane to go back and Shrewsbury town manager at the time, Mark Robbins, calls me and says, we want to offer you a deal. 
again, another team outside of London, but mm. I'm like, Shrewsbury, League One. I don't know where they were in the time. And I'm on the plane. I remember I was on the plane, literally. Wow. I said, mm. I'm going to Cyprus. I'm going to see what's going on over it. And then if it's not it doesn't work out, I'll give you a call back. He said, yeah, just give me a call back when you're coming back. These times, I'm going out there to sign. I'm coming back. <laughs> I'm packing my bags. I'm cutting out. Mm. So, um, yeah. And literally, that summer, I went to Cyprus. And again, it took a lot of time to adapt. Mm-hmm. Um, because in my mindset, again, it's about your mind. It's about, What's going on? Like, get, rid- get used to this. Mm. The weather was different. It was unbelievable. Mm. But it was just like, the football was very different. The fans, completely different. Like, no undertone, undertone <laughs> racism. Yeah. But you can accept it. Yeah. But you can have to check a man if he goes too far. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was one of them ones where they got this work that, so we would man the man, man them call it, they want the M1, whatever, so I'm yeah. saying. They got a term called Mavro. Oh. It means black man. Mm. But, we know where it really means. Mm-hmm. So I'm mm-hmm. like, yo. So he's like, Mavro, 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 hey, Mavro, Mavro. I'm like, bro, like, what's all this? What's all this? What's all this? Man, I'm just comfortable calling me this. I'm saying. But it was actually, it's actually their way of greeting you as a black man. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying. But they could also say it in an offensive way yeah. if they wanted to. So I'm saying, like, Tone of voice. Yeah, it's yeah. weird that Tone of like, there's yeah. different cultures, they have different ways of. Saying things. Yeah. So remember the Suarez and Everett? Yes, that's yeah. what I was about to allude right. to. Yeah. So for me, Suarez and Everett, as much as everyone talks and says, oh, racing, racing, in Suarez's country, they call Magnum Negro. Yeah. As endearing. Like, that's my mm. brother. That's yeah. Negro. That's my brother. Liverpool fan, isn't it? Huh? Liverpool fan, isn't it? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah, no, no, I hear it. No, no, here we go. 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 No, but literally, yeah, but it's endearing. That was what it was in this yeah. country. But obviously, Suarez so thinking, no, in France, you call me that. That's in Europe, you call me that. You're, 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 mm. you're, you're, it's offensive. Mm. So, um, with that scenario, yeah, it was it was very interesting to adapt to. But the football inside was very hard to adapt to as well. Mm. Hard, you say? It was hard. It was hard because the team I'd signed for was in the second division. Got just got relegated. Okay. So we're trying to get get them back up. I didn't. I didn't even know they were in second division. I was just trying to get come to terms with the surroundings. Of the same. Mm. So when I found out second division, I was like, okay, cool. This might be a little bit easier. But again, we're playing with players that you don't you don't know them. Mm. Now now I've got another thing, which is the um, language barrier. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like okay, cool. But they're trying to speak English with you, and you're trying to learn Cypriot as well. Um, Obviously, you learn the bad words first <laughs> in every in every culture, <laughs> but it was just like literally, it was it took a while. Um, managers obviously trying to get players to play how I want to play because I was the marquee signer and mm. such because I've come mm. from Charlton Athletic. Mm. But um, I didn't score in the first four or five games, okay. and literally the manager was on to me. He was like, "Who's this player that you brought here?" Really and I was dying for it, bro. I was like, "I need <laughs> to score. If I don't score now." It's a madness. Yeah. And I remember, I think it was the fifth game, I scored, I think I scored two, and then just like... That was it? You didn't stop after that? That was it. That was it. And then (coughs) that manager even got sacked. New manager came in, Steve Constantinidis or Constantine. He was an ex-Millwall coach. Yeah. So, it it helped because he spoke English Mm, as well. Okay. So, me and him just, well, just bouncing off each other as well. He made me like the main man and literally, that was it. Just Bang, bangs, goals, 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 got promoted, um, got into the first division. Then now suddenly he's bringing in a, be- a better quality of players, but also mm. players that I recognize. Mm. So Diego Leon came in. Diego Leon played for Barnsley, he was Real Madrid, started Real Madrid. Julian Gray came in. Mm. Then Julian came mm-hmm. in, everything changed for me. Because mm-hmm. I was like, yes, <laughs> someone that's on my level. Yeah. Like, this is my guy. So like it was literally me and Jules. Me and Jules literally lived above each other. He he lived above me in the penthouse. I was just in the humble thing, <laughs> but literally me and Jules used to kick it every day. Um, oh, it was good times man, with Jules. And then yeah, we just it it then it was short because I'd done so well in the first half of the season mm. in the first division. And Ayo came in. Okay, that's when mm. everything changed big time. Change. Come on. <laughs> but now I've got my chance, my opportunity to go and show on a grander stage mm. what I can really do. Mm. That IO was like my Charlton 
should have happened. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But in a smaller capacity. So now I'm in first division. I'm at IEL and I'm signing for this team. Um, they're buying me as well, like outright, and I'm just like, and they're sitting top of the league. Nothing can go wrong from here. Mm-hmm. Like literally, mm-hmm. I'm thinking, come on, it can't go wrong. To the point where I'm so confident in my ability and what I'm doing for Nia Salamina that when I go to IEL, the I'm 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 saying yeah. free reign, let's go. And the chairman's coming up to me and saying, okay, so he's talking bonuses and stuff, and he's saying, now Apple World are the big boys in Cyprus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Everyone assumes that Apple are going to win the league at some point. Mm. So there's, there's things that go on under the table, match fix and all that nonsense. Yes, mm. corruption in everywhere in football. But everyone assumes Apple are just going to win the league. Yeah. <laughs> but in IEO, we've got a brotherhood because everyone's of some form of African descent apart from the Cypriot players. Mm. So there's Cape Verde, there's Portuguese, there's, there's French, there's, there's bare different cultures. Mm-hmm. But we're all black brothers. And I feel like the even Cypriot boys became one of us as well. <laughs> okay. So we're all on the same page. And we're like, we can make history here. Mm. So I remember when I signed, the chairman came in and said to me about bonuses. He said, if we come first in the league, I'll give you X amount. I'm going to tell you straight. I'll give you, I'm going to give you 50K. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Each. I'm like, bro, oh, yeah. okay, you either don't believe that we're going to win this league mm. or you got dog. Yeah. Mm. So cool. He said, but if we come in the top four, I'll give you 10K. So I said, he just thinks we're going to come in the top four. So I said, all right, cool, cool, cool. I was on a mission. <laughs> I was on a mission. I wasn't even thinking about the money. Mm. More than anything, I wanted to win. Yeah. We all wanted yeah. to win. We were all united. We wanted to just win. Mm. Win, win, win. And I tell you, we, when, we, when we won the league, yeah, I've never experienced anything like it in my life. Like, I'm talking, and I remember it was even worse. It was bad for me because I had a drug test that day. As well, so they literally the drug mm. drug guys were just walking part walking by me the whole time. I got fans running up to me, pulling down my shorts, taking oh out my, my shit, taking my boots. But I'm, I'm coming off the pitch, basically stark as <laughs> yeah, I got my yeah. cycling shorts. That's that's it. It, man. And I'm literally just the fans went mad because we hadn't they'd never won the league. Like, imagine, they never yeah. won the league for like 44 years. I think oh, wow. the same year City won it. Yeah, Aguero, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it was, and it was. I remember it was the same year, amount of years that City hadn't won it. So I remember just it was insane, but it was just like. Wow. Yeah. And then I remember the next day, I was thinking, yo, this brother owes me 50 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Owes me a good 50, a clean yeah. 50. Yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting really like, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I'm coming to see you. Yeah. I'm coming to see you. <laughs> so, but, but, but no one believed it. Yeah. Because everyone, above the abuse that we were getting leading up to that last game, we had a team photo in Apple World, some Apple World fans had edited it and put all monkeys in front of oh, them. Oh, that's all that. Wow. Bro, they were just trying to get into our head. Yeah. And then someone had re-edited it and put lions because I owe a lion, mm. known as the lions, yellow lions. So it was just, it was just that, but we had to just block that out. And, mm. our, and our manager was the guy who made us block it out because his team talks were the best team talks I've ever had from any manager. Mm. Tactically, he just let us do what we needed to do. Mm. But, as an inspirational voice and coach, no one comes close. Really? No one comes wow. close to that, that, that manager. Wayne, Wayne Burnett was very different in regards to Dick O'Gun, do your thing. Pardew didn't really have the experience, experience it as much. Yeah. Parkinson mm-hmm. again. But my IO manager, my man with the speeches before games, bro. You, you <laughs> run you, for you, a wall. You are mm. winning. Mm. You are winning. If you want these guys to come into your home. You have to think to yourself, your children, your wife is in your home. <laughs> these guys are coming to kill you. <laughs> or to come and fuck your mother. <laughs> your wife. <laughs> bro, we're like, oh, who's coming to my yard? <laughs> who's coming to my yard? No, you might know it, bro. I tell you, you went to war and we weren't coming away with nothing but three points. And even at IEL, a lot of, a lot of my teammates respected what I did because not that I scored a lot of goals, yeah. I scored 
crucial goals. Okay. okay. Goals when you just, we needed a goal. Yeah. Mm. So I remember like we played Larnaca, 82 minutes gone, nil, nil. Like we're in the, it's the playoff times now in Cyprus. Because after, uh, Cyprus like Scotland. Mm-hmm. After, after season ends, mm-hmm. like 26 games, you break off into top. Promotion and, group and relegation. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in, our, in our promotion group, Apple are still hunting us down. We need to win every game. Because at some mm. point, someone's going to try a thing, yeah. corruption, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. So, literally, it was a case of, I just kept on scoring crucial goals. 82nd minute, 81st minute, 69th minute. Like, it's just always, one, we win 1-0, 2-0, and, and my name will be there. So, I was like, and again, the manager eased me in because he didn't throw me straight in. He was just like, look, I'm going to give you your time, give you your time. And he waited. I remember he waited until they played, like, I think the team that finished sixth, and he threw me in. And he was like, cool. And after two minutes, I scored. And he was like, okay, cool, he's ready. But it's just like a case of just building you up and getting yeah. you to the intensity of where we are at the top of the table. Because yeah, yeah, you're coming yeah. from a team that's mid-table. Mm. We're putting you, you're, we're up here. So I was readapting to that as well, which was, but I just felt like I, ne- I never felt a closer unit than Ayo. Ayo yeah. was oh, wow. definitely like the time where I felt like Good. this is this is football. And I'm going to see that's when the money kind of changed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it was um, winning that league. It's the fans were unbelievable. They celebrated for the same amount of days that, of, of years that we hadn't won the league. So I think 44, wow, 44 wow. days. That's dope. mad. Lighting up the wow. beach. Like, you couldn't go out. In fact, my cousins came over. Literally, one of my cousins is an idiot. So we, I said, no, I can't really be seen out right now because otherwise it's going to get, it's, we're not going to move. You get mobbed. So yeah. It's mad. Mm. They're passionate about football like never before. So gone out. I said, look, you might want to go to like a beach party, so I'm go do your thing. So I'm saying, like, nah, come with us, come with us, don't worry. So I'm saying, just wear a hat or something. Like, cool. This idiot gets out of the car. <laughs> they're celebrating on the road. They're mm. still celebrating. Like, this is day like six. They're still celebrating. Mm. Yo, Dick said Dick sitting in the car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. Bro, they run over, pull yeah. me out of the car, throw me. Yeah. <laughs> I said, you are bad, bro. Pussy, oh, bro. What are you doing? You're killing me now, bro. So I'm saying, but. Rookie. Who's that? Me. Man said rookie. <laughs> <laughs> ta, ta. But yeah, no, that experience mm. itself was, yeah, unbelievable. Um, And obviously winning a league, a, a premier division mm. in another country, like, yeah, it was just uh, insane. Yeah. Did, did insane. the chairman oh, wow. do what he needed to do with his... Uh, <laughs> did, with he his yeah. did he honor his bet? Did he honor his bet? He did. Top he man. did. Oh, man. But he did it in a way. He did it in a way where no, he no, he did. He did. I can't <laughs> yeah. even say he did it. He did. He did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did so because, but he did it, and then, but I feel like the city did a lot more. Okay. Okay. Like okay. I went out places and I ain't paying for nothing. Bro, oh, I remember man. around that time. This is a little bit of private story. But around that time, I went into jewelers. Um, and I was looking Ooh. for a ring for little man's mum. Mm. Um, I was going to put the question. And literally, I went to go get a watch as well. Mm. And I remember the watch was about 12 bags. And the guy went, for you, half price. Mm. Half price. Anything. <laughs> and you can add the ring. And I give you a ring half price. That's mad. Right? I'm like, whoa. I said, yeah. I said, I said, she was all trying on the ring and everything. She was like, but she didn't know what I had a mm. conversation about. So I just tried out and see what it was. You know what I'm saying? And then literally, it was just like, that that week was turbulent. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to come back for that watch. <laughs> I'm going to come back for that watch. Yeah. I'm going to come back for that watch. Yeah. Yeah. But it was just like, the mm. city, anywhere you went, they just, they just, ah, oh, they loved you because yeah. you just brought so much mm. joy to them because they're so passionate about it. And, yeah, I, I, yo, I can, anyone ever asked me what was the greatest time that you had in football? It's it, outside of playing for Ghana. So I, yo, just oh, before, crazy. before, before that, is it, you know, based on your experience of playing abroad and you see now more kids, more younger footballers are open to going abroad, you know, w- would you say, you know, would you recommend it? Would you, you know, tell people go abroad, stop I, I encourage stuck? it. I encourage it. I encourage yeah. it. I always say to people, because I've traveled to different, various different places, I say football's everywhere. Mm. Football's everywhere. My experience with IEL allowed me to see football's everywhere. My experience in Cyprus allowed me to see football's everywhere. But with IEL predominantly because we qualified for Champions League, Europa League, mm. so we went different places. Football's everywhere. 
the golden chalice is the Premier League mm. for so many different reasons. Maybe it's the best league in the world. But yes, it has the most money in, in the game <laughs> until Saudi came along. <laughs> but it's, it's where everyone wants to be because once you're there, you can go anywhere. Mm. Once you're mm. there, everyone looks, kids look up to you and say, oh my God, you're so-and-so from the Premier mm. League. You play for Arsenal, you play for... It's, it's the place to be. Yeah. But if you can't make it there, or, and you, or you can't make it in champion. I feel like championships even harder. Yeah, but hard. if you can't make it yeah. to M2, go abroad. Go abroad. So, interestingly, you, you mentioned Saudi. What are your thoughts as a pro- professional, ex-professional footballer on the whole Saudi invasion? It's exactly that as well. They, they haven't sent you an offer yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hold up, really, that's what I'm saying. That's my thoughts. That's my thoughts. Yeah. Listen, I've got two more years in the team for Saudi. Yeah. 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 Come no, on. No. Um, I know, I, I know genuinely... that's a wide question, but mm. I think I did that on purpose just to see where you go from, you know, what, what you... I think it's great right. for football. I think so. I think it's great football. Pol- politics aside, I think it's great That's just because they're taking all your players, man. I mean... <laughs> they're taking all our players yeah. yeah but I think for football <laughs> it's great for football yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's expanding the game yes there's politics politics that mm-hmm. come with it the whole Jordan Henderson situation I understand that and what their rules are over there mm. but for football itself it's showing you that actually there's supporters yeah. everywhere that love this game yeah. that we all love over here yeah. why can't we share it why does it have to be that this is the number one place to yeah. be? You know what I'm saying? When actually, no, guess what? There's other places that have the same, have the same and more passion for football mm. than the UK, than England. So why not? I, I think it's unbelievable. I think it's great. I, I, I actually wish, I always say to Westy, we won the wrong, wrong generation, fam. <laughs> so, so, so you would have liked to be in, yeah. more in this era no. where, oh, <laughs> I, I think we know that <laughs> <laughs> I would have been gone mm. yesterday mm. <laughs> immediately like literally and don't get me wrong it wouldn't have it would have been for the peace yes mm. that's why I, all them men have gone mm. that's why right because it sets you up the career, your career, this football career I started at 22 I feel like I was 22 yesterday it goes mm. quick mm. so whilst you're in it and I've been blessed to only have injuries that are not long term. I'm saying not. So whilst you're in it, capitalize because after football, and probably we'll probably touch on this another time. Is after football is the hardest period yeah. in your life. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Fred Hasselbank once said to me, "Your real life starts when your football career ends." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Because I was young at the time. I mean, this football takes forever. <laughs> talking about you're still playing. <laughs> Thinking, but well, like if you're still playing, I can still play. Not realizing, listen. Life goes, life goes quick. Yeah. Life goes quick and your football career goes quicker. So once your football career ends, what do I do next? And mm. this is why I feel like, I, I feel like it's a lot, I went a better route. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it wasn't easier. It wasn't, um, I just feel like it was a, a lot better for me because I had life experiences before football. Yes. Mm. And then okay. when I went into football, yes, I got lucky and yeah. people say yes and, and yes it doesn't often happen it might happen more often now probably than it did when, back, back then but if I didn't have life experiences before that I wouldn't know what I'm going to do after football mm. whereas a lot of these academy boys they go strictly through football and then it's like, and then they get dropped and it's like mm. what do I do now they've never been in the real world before no mm. no no other other kind of backup plan, no skills, yeah. no other skills, man. Literally, what do I do? So, is there is there really no kind of not necessarily aftercare, but for academy players who don't make it? I mean, in the process, is there not some sort of kind of of um, I don't know class or guidance to say, right? Yes, you're on the path of football, but if you don't make it, this is what life will be like. Ten percent. 10% is who you know. Mm. Who you know. Because that's the only people that are actually really going to look out for you if they genuinely care about you. That little 10%. That 10% manager where he's where he's where he's coached you, he sees you, you're not gonna make the cut with me, but you know what? I've got a mate that at a different club that Don't can you. probably get you hit look after you Don't here. You. But you can't do that with 20 For years. everyone. Yeah. You can't do that with yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah. It's impossible. So mm. you might have the one, the two, the three. Otherwise, the rest of them, I can understand, they fall out. They fall out of love for it and the rejection is mad. If your mind, mindset isn't correct, I, I understand why mental health is rife in that, mm. in that department because 
it's just like this is all I've done as a kid, mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. as a five six year old. It's all I know, and I've come through the system, and I'm thinking I'm gonna make it. And then at 14, 15, for whatever reason, it could be any reason. Yeah, I've not made the cut, and now what do I do? Like I don't have any other skills. Like, I don't yeah. know anything else. I'm saying so. It's it's it, there isn't, and that's why Trent Trent and I see the um, Stephen Corker. Yeah. Um, um, Jacob Mellis, them lot are doing yeah. a project at the moment, and I'm thinking, and I, it's beautiful that they're doing that because it's not just for us, it's for them kids. It's also people that are out of yeah. as well. When you mm-hmm. got a contract, you need somewhere to go and someone somewhere to work, somewhere to, and it's not just for football. You can, they're trying to find other avenues for okay. them because you need to be out. You can't just bash somebody just like that. So it's, just, it's 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 mad. It's mad. But, and and again. Ex pros that I've spoken to, we've had this conversation so many times. I've had this conversation with so many men and said, "Why don't the FA allow ex pros to help these players?" That's why so many ex pros are now trying to be coaches or trying to be agents yeah. or something because they want to help in that that gap. Of course, they want to make they want to have something to yeah make, make a living make a living mm-hmm. with as well. But they want to help. Yeah, they want to help because yeah. that, there's there's a massive gap there, yeah. and it, and it's there to be filled. And the FA could fill it. How much money do these guys make? Mm-hmm. Could fill it, but so you said you you touched on the the fact that you played Champions League. Yeah. Explain to us what it's like hearing that feet anthem. Because <laughs> <laughs> we all do it. We all hit, listen to it. I, and we all close our eyes and wonder what it's like. <laughs> but you've actually lived it. So, so what is it? Goosebumps. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, it's bad. It's what's bad is that Irif, obviously I'm back at Irif, yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. and obviously we have people on the radio in it, like I'm just on the radio just doing the music. Whoever does the music, and um, and I I usually get my Bluetooth connected to it first because I've done it. I've I've done the last game or something like that. And uh, I was like, guys, who's connected to the Bluetooth? Who's connected to the Bluetooth? And they're like. I don't know, don't know. And I know it's me in it. <laughs> <laughs> I just put on the Champions League. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, come on, you're into it. You're connected to the music. Like, but and I'm standing in the middle of the change room like... <laughs> 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 I'm going fast. I'm doing a little wink. <laughs> no, but I'll be honest with you. Um, it, it's... it's um, you just feel like this is football. Really? Okay. And again, I felt more than anything, because at that point I had a son. Oh, and yeah. it was only one. Yeah. But mm-hmm. it was like, oh, I know you're watching right mm-hmm. now. And I know this is going to be memories for you to see and, yeah. And, yeah. And, and maybe inspire you or maybe just be proud of. Yeah. But that was my moment where I thought, son's here. Son's seeing this. Like, and he don't know what the hell's going on <laughs> with daddy. What's this yeah. big old massive thing on, with ball in the middle of the pitch? But for me personally, you don't think about that until okay. afterwards. Okay, okay. During it, we want to win this game. You're locked yeah. in. It's just mm-hmm. locked in. You're just thinking, yeah. I want to w- play this game. We want to win this game. Afterwards, you think, rah, when he had the messages saying, yo, I just see you on ITV, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, you're like, you're like, yeah, 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 cool. But during it, it's mm. like locked in, locked in. But yeah, like after you think, I really did that. That's mental, you know. And from Eric from Belvedere, yeah. Champions bro. Champions, <laughs> Ball. League, bro. Champions League, man. Hey, and the worst, the, the only bad experience of that is we were obviously it's Champions League qualifiers. Yeah, yeah. So course. we got to we we played Partizan Belgrade, um, unbelievable experience again because we went to Serbia. Yeah, what was Serbia. that atmosphere like there? This is why it's yeah. <laughs> all the flares and yeah, the teams, yeah. Yeah. flares, yeah. everything. But mm. coming out for a warm up and you hear. Ooh, yeah, must yeah, yeah, be worse than your own so, friends, yeah, right? Okay. What? Way worse. Yeah, Bruh. Serbia. Way worse. Way worse. I remember saying this, saying to somebody else, saying, "Listen, they were saying, when's the most hostile place you've ever been to? I said, Serbia. Really? Without mm. doubt. And the intimidation that they try to throw onto you, the fans. Yeah. And you're and to overcome that, and then this is the most the pr- one of the proudest moments. Is when you come off that pitch and they're clapping you. Mm. They're the same fans. Them, same fans. Okay. okay. And you've yeah. overcome their team. You've overcome their their ignorance. You've overcome their mm. discrimination. You've mm. overcome everything. Yeah. And, they're, and actually, it burning them right yeah. now to clap. Mm. You know what I'm saying because actually, you know what? We've come, we've come, and we've done a job, and we're going home. And it was unbelievable. Yeah, that was unbelievable. I felt like we just it, we stuck together. That made us even mm. stronger. Mm-hmm. So when we went into the next one, it was Linfield, 
no, in Northern Ireland, mm-hmm. I'm saying to them, man, bring your hoodies, bring your jackets, because yeah, 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 yeah. this is about to get real. Yeah. We going home, baby. Yeah. So I'm saying, like, I'm just around the corner for yeah. me, guys. Like, these are my neighbors. Mm-hmm. So when we go to Northern Ireland, them man didn't expect it. It was cold. It was mm. cold. And um, we drew nil nil. Yeah. And then, um, no, actually, the first leg was in Cyprus. So, first okay. leg was in Cyprus. And I'm saying to them, man, the, the Linfield man are saying, oh, How do you play in this? How do you play in this? <laughs> <laughs> them man are taking off their tops yeah, and, ri- and ringing it out. So, I'm saying, yeah. I'm like, What? Because it's obviously, we don't even play at that time of the year. Mm. I think it was July. Oh, so I'm saying, okay. But because qualifiers, yeah, it's, yeah, early. it's early. Yeah. Yeah. So, I remember mean, it was the shortest summer I ever had. Mm. So, I was like, Literally, and then man, went like, like, we won three 0 and it went there. Yeah. And I'm saying it's gonna be totally reverse, you man. Be ready in it. They're not. They're not ready. It was cold, but <laughs> nil nil. God, they're done. Mm. And then literally, that, then we moved on to Anderlecht. Oh, oh. Anderlecht was the one where like, proposition mm, together. Boy. Okay, this is serious business. Mm. And that's when I. That, that's when like, the experience I thought. <sighs> this is, this yeah. is the big time. This is business time. And even when I'm looking at their team sheet, I'm like, yeah. Mm. This is the big mm. time. Yeah. We get through this, we're done. Mm. First leg at home, win 2-1. Right. And that's when I was, and that's when the music came. Okay. Because the first other rounds, they weren't really music. They don't play no. the music in the first rounds, no? It wasn't them first two, two qualifiers. Yeah. Weren't really music. That round there, music. And I'm like, yeah, cool. Bearing in mind, for the first leg, I was even put on the bench. So I was, I was mm. fuming, but I was uh, like, cool, yeah. no problem. Came on, did my thing. We scored 2-1, cool. Then second leg, bench again. I'm like, ah. Oh. But mm. Anderlecht is like, the, the stadium is so close. I don't know if you've been to like Goodison Park or something. That's, yeah, that's yeah, the only yeah, thing yeah, I can think yeah, of. Yeah, like, yeah. I haven't been to Everton, but apparently that's how close it is. Yeah, it is Mad. close. Mm. Mad close. Anderlecht, they're right on top of you. Is it? The fans no. are there, bro. Like, it's, it's <laughs> you're warming up and they're there, right there. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. And I'm thinking, this is the big time. This is this mm. is it. And we were eight minutes away. Yeah. From going to the group stages. Damn. Oh, and I remember, I'll never forget, I remember like, our captain playing, playing the ball back into our left back. I'm like, why are you doing that? Mm. <laughs> I'm thinking, this is mad. That we're eight minutes away. Don't do it. And then Bumbakani, pat, scored. Oh. And so now he's brought on like me, he brought on another mm. brother. We're trying to chase it. I remember there was a chance I had and I, thought, I was thinking, if I was ready, ready, like, or if, I, if it was earlier, mm. I'd have been, like, mm. been fresh, could have just lobbed the keeper here, and then, bam, counter attack, hit us again, 2-0. Uh, um, and I remember us. just thinking to myself, we've just gone from probably bonuses in the mills. Wow. Yeah, proper. Thousands. Yeah. And I'm like, that was one thing, but the second thing was when we heard the group stage, the, the group that, that you could have been into oh. the next day. AC Milan. Ooh, I heard that. I heard no, that enough. I no. said San Zero. Because you're guaranteed six games. Oh, San Zero. You are guaranteed, guaranteed six, six games. Games. Regardless yeah. of how it goes. Sa- I'm like San Zero. That's all I, I remember. I don't remember who else was. I just remember AC Milan was in oh, So then, okay. but then saying that, the other side of it was Europa League. So we qualified for Europa mm. League because of that. Um, and our Europa League group was tough. Fenerbahce, <laughs> Borussia Mönchengladbach, <laughs> Marseille. Oh, oh, nah. No, that's a rude group. That's a rude group. For real. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Exactly. It was it was nice. Nice. Mm. So, and again, so I'm traveling down to France, it's the Velodrome, um, Gladbach Stadium, um, Fenerbahce, wherever their stadium's mm. called. And obviously, crazy. Again, Turkey, Turks and Cypriots. I mean, not for us. We're playing for a Cypriot team, but we ain't Cypriot. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Cypriot man, they're like, yeah. they're on it. They're yeah. like, listen, oh, we have to kill these guys. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, right, these men are cool. So it's a turkey's a nice place. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that was, that was, that group in itself was, um, was a mad experience. I remember the first game was Marseille. We went 1 0 up. We got gassed. We thought, yeah, yeah. Them man, I'm looking, thinking, you know, them man got Valbuena and them man. That's what I was about to say. Who were the star players? Valbuena at that time. Gignac, 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 Gignac,
Um, I remember she said, again, names. I'm just thinking, Dirk, how like, this is the guy that was in Liverpool. I'm like, it's my guy, <laughs> Um Raul Morelles. Raul Morelles is the best player I've ever seen play. Really? Like, with my own eyes. I like, so I was going to yeah, yeah, yeah. do like okay. quick hitters, but easily, we're here now. So easily, easily. Really? Raul Morelles, I've never seen someone just so cultured and relaxed um, in an, an environment and just, just, just nothing phased him. Nothing phased him. Really? Raul Morelles is unbelievable. Um, and then we went to no. I mean, Joseph Yobo played that game as well. Joseph Yobo. There was another couple. Musa Sal, who was a striker. He yes, was yeah, yeah. I know you're talking about. Yeah, well. yeah. So W Sal, yeah, yeah, yeah. strong. Yeah. Right, Joseph Yobo just flinged me about, bro. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> right. But it was um, again amazing. Germany. Ger- we went to Germany next, which was dab back. Shaka, Granite Shaka played. Was he playing for the? Oh, was he playing oh, then? Wow. Yeah, team. When I look back on the team lineups as well, mm. I'm like, wow, like, play, oh, wow. mm. even Andalek's team lineup. I'm like, raw. Wow, there's yeah, some yeah, big boy yeah. names yeah. in there that mm. weren't big names the, at the time, but yeah, they went on came. to. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, Shaka played in that game. I remember. I've even got a picture. I was like, oh, that's not my man. Cool. Oh, okay. So, I'm there beating beating him in the air like everything. I'm thinking, oh, yeah. So, but yeah, no. But um, again, that Germany. One thing about Germany as well was beautiful was it doesn't matter what game it is, they've always got packed out stadiums. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you see like in England, certain times you go games, yeah. listen, you go games, not even, but the stadium that you packed out. So I'm saying, in, 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 empty seats, Germany, no chance. It's like, it's like Emirates, packed. isn't it? Mm. On a, on a... What? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> like Emirates how? What, as in, it's always packed out. <laughs> <laughs> always, Emirates is always packed out. Is that what you're trying to say? No, it's not. It's not always. It's always packed out. Yeah, it's always packed out. Let's get it. 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 Let's get um, and this man came to the same minute. Obviously, I scored against Marseille. Come on, mm. dope. Oh, scored, scored Hold them, man. Got an assist. Mm. And we won 3 0. But, and, and this Ginak and Valbuena didn't play. Lurk Remy played. I remember he played. But mm. it was like a dead rubber game, innit? Yeah. But mm. it was like, go on and show what you can do. And I remember, just, I remember at that point, we had a new manager as well. Mm-hmm. Once we got in that type of Champions League, the new manager came and gave up, you know, George Costa. I remember. George Costa. Yeah. Chuck Madden, ex charm player mm. as well. Mm. So you think me and him get along? <laughs> so, yeah, but um, yeah, so yeah, played that game, scored against Marseille, and then literally from that moment onwards, my I, I knew my AO career was coming to an end. New managers come in, things change. Yeah, mm. in yeah, Cyprus, yeah. things change very quickly. Yeah. When new manager comes in, and they just wanted to bring in new players. He wanted to bring in his own players. I think we got rid of about six of us from the championship with the team, and it was like, I mean, we still got a league to come. You know what I'm saying, but he wasn't interested. Fair and, enough. At that point, it was time to find a new club. Um, and I just did not know where I was going. Mm-hmm. I, didn't, I, I knew I didn't want to play in Cyprus mm-hmm. for another team so soon after winning the league. So it was a case of... Is that when you moved back to Dagenham Redbridge or did you find a Cypr- a separate team and then move back to Dagenham? That's when I went to China. Oh, yeah, you went to China. Yes, China. That, oh, yes, okay. that's when you went to China. That's when I went to yes, China. you went to China. Um, the Chinese journey was... Interesting. Mm. So I only have two regrets in football: not playing in the Premier League because of and and two regrets in football that weren't within my power. Yeah. So not playing the Premier League and not staying in China. Really? really? Okay. Did you have other offers before you decided to go to China? Was there offers back in England that um, you considered? Not that I can remember. Unless and the money. Funniest thing about football in England. Yeah, once you leave here, you might make some sort of a name here, might, mm. but once you leave here, people forget you. Outside, out of mind, sort outside, of thing. Outside, out of mind. Mm. So I'm, I'm. So I remember when I came back to England after after China, um, and then I came back to England, and managers were like, "We didn't even know you were still playing football." I'm like, I "Swear, mm. <laughs> I've been playing in the Champions League." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, don't you be cheeky. Like, no, yeah. right? Don't I'm be like, cheeky. Like, yeah. You've been watching. You've been watching. Yeah, yeah, I was like, 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 I was
But China, um, yeah, China was unbelievable. China, China was unbelievable experience. Yeah. And like, as then, like I said, like I said, um, I regret not staying there longer or not being given opportunity to stay there longer. But injury, injury hit me again. Yeah. Um, I just couldn't get back And my, it was my ankle This time So that just came through Me first game of the season Ooh. I remember my mum's birthday I'll never forget I was gassed Flew to Beijing I'm the main man Tap that they, 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 I'm their marquee signing I'm that guy So I'm saying that, that, It's time Let's do this but I, I, but I remember saying to them Stop hyping me During preseason Because every preseason game I was scoring When mm-hmm. I was in preseason I was to Hong Kong I'm banging in goals In this little tournament Against the, Thai, the Thailand to, um, And Malaysian top teams And whatnot. And I'm like, but they're saying, but at the time, Drogba was just leaving um, our rivals. So I signed for take us Shanghai SIPG. Mm. Drogba, signed, Drogba and Nelko oh. were playing for Shanghai so, Shenhua. So, mm. yeah. ah, so okay. rivalry. Okay. And Drogba was just about to leave. And my team's hyping saying, yeah, we got Drogba. Mm. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you think that's why they went through? Thanks. Like, <laughs> Thanks. The new Drogba. <laughs> We'll show him. Defender's like, gone, yeah? All right. I'm like, stop doing that. Stop saying, I'm saying, I, 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 like, that the translator, the translator's telling me, well, on, the translator's telling me, this is what they're like. He's like, yeah, they, hey, they're really excited about you. You're, like, you're just like Didier. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like Didier. Your prem numbers. And you're, I had one prem number. <laughs> you're telling me about that. to so stop. Yeah. <laughs> well, remember the first game, that guy, I'll never forget, that Beijing defender did not need to go through me like that. And I thought, you're trying to leave a mark. You're trying to leave a mark. And I remember our chairman said, oh, if he was that smart player, you would have got Swear. out of the way for that tackle. And I was like, huh? My ankle's in a balloon. My ankle's mm. blown up. It's like a balloon. I've still got to get on a plane and then put no boot on it. Yeah, nothing. that don't help, man. Mm. So I was just sad. I just remember I couldn't get back. I was just, it was, that, was, that was probably the hardest period away from the UK. Mm. That I'd ever experienced because mm. I was so far away. My family wasn't with me. Um, so I've got a new son as well. Yeah. And I was away for yeah, best part of six months. And it was just like, I don't want to be here. Mm. I don't want to uh-huh. be here if I'm like this. Yeah, of course. Mm. Yeah. But if I'm not like this, you wanna I'm see, yeah. staying here. Yeah. I'm learning the language, I'm eating the food, mm. I'm eating <laughs> everything, but I gotta get this right. Mm. And it's like I didn't feel like they were helping me. To get that right, Great. and, and Great. don't get me wrong, they were a team that just come from the second division, so they were adapted as well. So they had old school doctors, old school herbal medicines. When they took you to go to the mountains or something, literally, I remember, I said to myself, surely I'm going to get a scan. And they're like, no, 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 no scan, no scan. We fix, we fix, we fix. I'm like, I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, oh, they're putting like needles, giving me herbal remedies. No, no, no. I never had it. Right now, I've never had an injection ever. Uh. Injections in my ankles. They're trying to bring the swelling down. I'm like, I just need a scan. <laughs> like, no, we can do this. We can do this. After three days, they're telling me to run. Oh, I'm <laughs> I can't run. I can't run. I literally can't cannot run. run. They're taking a mick. I'm joking. I'm trying to sit up. Person run, you know. <laughs> I can't run. Nah, that is bro, mad. I'm jogging. Wow. I'm trying to jog. And I'm just. <laughs> you actually tried as well. Bro, like, it's like, I'm like, it's never going to happen. So, yeah, I was, yeah, I was trying to jog. Trying to jog. And I was like, I'm trying my hardest to get back, but yeah. it's not happening. Mm. So a month went by, um, I started to feel a bit better, played a res- reserve game, Barca Craft turn, went again. Mm-hmm. No one near me. And I'm like, this isn't right. Called Errol. Yeah. <laughs> Called Errol. Errol was out. Like, Why didn't you call me three weeks ago? Like, yeah. I'm like, they said they could fix it. We can fix, we can fix. I said, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Errol said, send me, I said, Errol said, first things first, tell them, demand you go and get a scan. So I said, he said, I don't know what they're going to see much. This they're going to see much now, but there's still fluid in there, whatever. When I got the scan, I sent it to Errol straight mm-hmm. away. Errol was like, all right, cool. He told me exactly what would happen. He said, are they putting you in a boot at any, at any point? I said, I've never been in a boot. He was like, what? That's the first thing you should have done. And you've been on a plane. Like, That's the yeah, end. Mm-hmm. And they asked you to run. They go, come on, man. You got to look up. And I'm like, 
Errol, I'm, I'm, I'm not wise to know this. I'm sorry, I, don't, mm. I don't know. I just, I've never had anything like this. Mm. Like, this kind of injury before. So, so as time went by, it was this case of, I'm not getting back fit at any point. I'm eating. I'm putting on weight. I'm just like, what? I, I literally, had, there was nothing I could do. And there was a case of, you need to um, pack your bags and leave. Mm. <laughs> and I remember, Around that time, my grandmother died as well. Mm-hmm. That didn't help the that didn't help my mm-hmm. cause because I had to fly to Ghana mm-hmm. to bury her, um, and they were not happy about that because they're thinking you're injured and you're you're injured. You're not playing for us, and you're flying you're flying to Ghana. And I said, listen, man, I have to go. That's my that's my grandma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I went to Ghana and I came back. That was pretty much the final straw. And I said, look, we got to terminate. We got to we're gonna we're gonna terminate your deal. I said, cool. Well, I signed a two year deal. Pay me up. Mm, um, yeah, it was decent. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I came back, but now I'm semi injured, overweight, need to get back fit. Went to see Errol. Errol just said, Look, this is what we've got to do. Um, but at the same time, I've got that hunger. I don't want to leave the gap of not playing. Mm. So Errol was like, Look, Whilst you're doing rehab, go and just go and enjoy it. Just go and enjoy it a little bit. Since time like you've been through the wars for the last six mm-hmm. months. And I was like, mm-hmm. But I know my enjoyment with this new money mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. is going to be very different. <laughs> so I'm going Portugal, Dubai. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm yes. everywhere. Me and my me and my son's mom at the time we're just out here. So I'm saying I'm I've, I've got a house. I'm just that. I'm just doing the most. So I'm saying mm-hmm. and literally. I'm not playing football and the season's happening right now. And I'm I'm in Dubai. What? Remember, I went to Dubai. I went to Dubai, Dubai 84 kg, which is usually my fighting weight. I came back 89. Mm. And I went mm. back a week. Mm. Eating good. <laughs> well, bro. I didn't do any exercise, nothing. I was just, just enjoying. And I was like, and I came back and that was the hardest 5 kg I've ever had to shift. <laughs> If you know how hard it was, I just could not get going. I was obviously semi injured as well, still, still. Yeah. And then I got a phone call from um, Wayne, um, Wayne Burnett. And he said, Look, come down to Dagenham um, just, just to get fit. Yeah. Anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll see if we can offer you something. And what he offered me, <laughs> you got, if you've got to think, my, my mind state is I've just gone from the highest earning contract I've ever had yeah. in my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm about to sign with Dagenham. And probably what he offered me was probably the second lowest I'd ever had Swear. in my career. But he was just giving me a lifeline. Mm. He was giving me a platform to just, listen, try and get back in. That season at Dagenham, great for camaraderie, great to get me back in the team, get me back in the in the, in the system. Mm. Terrible for my career. Did you ever really get over that injury though? Because you, you played 25 Good question. or so games for them. For and Dagenham. And didn't score that many nah. goals compared I was, to... I was not fit the whole time. I was never fit. I was never fit at to the level that I knew I could be mm. at. So my ankle was just wasn't where it needed to be. Um, it didn't help. That it was the same same ankle as my foot, as yeah. my knee. Yeah, 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 previously, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know it's still years apart, but wear and tear. Um, but I was never, I was never fully fit at Dagenham, and ultimately, I just felt like I was, I was forcing it. Forcing it when really maybe I should have just waited another six. I should have stayed in China first and foremost. I should have said, no, I'm not <laughs> going nowhere. But if I am going to go, do you know what? Get yourself really fit and then January hit it. Go get yourself really fit for January and mm-hmm. January just mm-hmm. hit it. Wherever yeah. you're going to go, just go. But I was so eager. I mean, what's that for the dad in October or something like that? And I was just eager and I was already, I was never mm-hmm. ready. So literally after dad and them, I just said, look, I've got to get out of here. Um, to be fair, there was some things going on with family as well and I was like me and little man's mom separated and I was like I can't be here like, I just don't want to be here um, came back and I went back to Cyprus mm. go where you love didn't it and literally Cyprus again good times I'm happy again like, I'm <laughs> chilling like I'm, I'm, I even signed signed for a team in second division and I was like okay cool whatever Pathos FC let's go mm banging goals just enjoying mm. again so I'm saying I wasn't even on big money to be honest but I was just mm. like just doing what I enjoy and I'm putting mm. on a show every week for this new club and we're going to get promoted 100% yeah. got promoted um, and then literally that year I ended up 
decide and what I'll decide I was going to stay again. I didn't want to come back. Mm. And as much as I wanted, as much as I wanted to come back, from, I wanted to come back for my son more than anything. I was like, I can still go here. Like we're in the first division. I'm gonna get a first division club, club probably. So I, me and Paphos were having some loggerheads about just peas and stuff. I was like, what are you doing? Like, just come on, I want to sign for you lot. So I ended up going to sign up for Paralimni. Um, and then I remember Paralimni had another striker. He was he was more, more money than me. Mm. Again, they, they he was a bigger name than me for some reason. Yeah. But <laughs> I wasn't feeling him at all. Bro. I was like, "Who has this guy playing ahead of me?" But he ended up. Um, they ended up choosing him over me yeah. in regards to starting more games. So all right, cool. I think, you know, having goals I scored, but I ended up going to a Miss, who were higher in the league than uh, Parallel Me anyway. Mm-hmm. Went to a Miss, the chairman. Uh, this is that the head of the mafia over there. And <laughs> he's my guy. <laughs> so he, he was there. And he was trying to sign Julian Gray as well, so trying to get Julian. And I was like, yeah, get Julian, get Julian, get Julian. <laughs> I was trying to get Jules in. And then, and literally, I remember just thinking to myself, any, I remember going to his yard and I was thinking, I've got to tread carefully. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, he was, and he was like, Dixon, hey, I've been trying to sign you for many years, my friend. <laughs> I said, yeah, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend. I'm like, you, the only man here. To say that to me right now. My friend, my friend. I'm like, yeah, cool, I'm your my friend. You know what I'm saying? That like, went to his car park. What car you want to drive today? Oh, yeah. You name it. Everything. Everything. I was back in. I was back at Charles <laughs> Premier League. Right? I was back at Charles <laughs> Premier League. I was like, yo, this is the big time again, still. But yeah, he just said, I just said, oh, no, I'll take the smart car. He's like, oh, smart car. Bentley, Lamborghini, <laughs> come on. <laughs> take the smart car, I'm calm, man. But it's that like he, he really loved my character because he'd yeah. heard so much good things mm-hmm. about me as well. So me and him just clicked. Um, but it just came to a point where at the end of that season, it was time to come home. Mm-hmm. Daddy, daddy. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I've been it's, time, man. Now. It's, it's time to come back. Yeah. Um, and then I came back, and then that's when I, that's the second time I heard, I went, when I went to Sutton, the second time mm. I heard, I can't believe they were playing football still. I'm like, mm. huh? I'm like, I'm under a rock somewhere. What's going on? And as I said to you, when you leave UK, you're outside of mind, but even more so, the, the, you feel like the higher ups don't want to let you back in, mm. especially when you're on the other side, on the other side of 30 as well. So thinking, this guy, like, who's this guy who's been abroad? Like, okay, cool, you won the Super League. Well, yeah. you played in the Chinese Super League. What did you do? And I'm like, no, no, no. That's a big deal. And even now, as we fast forward how many years, 10 years, whatever, that's a big deal. Mm. You go, you, mm, you, you say you, you won a league, Premier League in another country, mm. that's a big deal. Certain saying, top level rules. strikers can't say they've even won anything. Mm. There's certain, bro, <laughs> you know, you know what it is? <laughs> Allow Hurricane. <laughs> Allow Hurricane. Yeah. Yeah. Pardon? But Allow it, Hurricane. You can't say that though. But it's like, <laughs> mm. like you can't, it's so, it's so hard and I get people bantering and say, oh yeah, it was only Cyprus somewhere. I was like, yeah, but in order to attain that, Status of yeah. saying you played in the Champions League, you played in the Europa League, you you have to achieve something mm, in exactly. that country. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. And I said, I even said, I remember the year. I think the year we won the league. I said, Apple well got into the quarterfinals of the Champions League and played Real Madrid. Mm. They got smoked, mm. but they got to the quarterfinals of the Champions yeah. League. I didn't see That's no big. one else that yeah. that those yeah, teams don't get smoked taken out before that. So I'm saying in more established leagues. So I said you got like you just got respect. All, all levels of football, wherever it is. So whether it whether it is Saudi or whether it's Turkey or whether it's Cyprus or England, football's football. Yeah. And underdogs are always going to come up somewhere, somewhere. And, and you might find a gem. You might find gem players and think, okay, cool, yeah, well, he can he could probably play at a higher level. So you've got to respect all levels of football because you don't know where it's going to take you. And that's that, literally. That is yeah. the truth. I mean, we say it all the time and we, we banter and joke about, you know, certain levels and things like that. But the truth is the truth. I mean, football's football no matter where you play it. Right. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I mean... Your, your, um, sorry, take, your career is so long, yeah, that we don't have... I think we'd probably need about four or five hours to... I think we would definitely... There definitely has to be a part two. We ain't even spoken about him playing for Ghana. Exactly. We ain't spoken about how he ended up back at Irith. Exactly. Um... 
One thing I would like to talk on though, I don't know if she's going to bring this up, but Hornchurch. Yeah. The final in Wembley. Yeah. Particularly. You didn't start that game, but you definitely had a massive impact. Why so, didn't you start the game first and foremost? So let's go back. Okay. Quickly to the semi final. Okay. So the semi final was more memorable to me than the final. Mm-hmm. Okay. And everyone thinks, everyone says, what? You played at Wembley. Mm-hmm. Semi final, we was in COVID first and foremost. Mm. I was on dual registration because I was at Dartford as well, because we obviously COVID hit. Hornchester's League got locked off. Mm-hmm. I got a dual reg move to Dartford. Yeah. Then COVID hit Dartford's league. So it was like, whilst Hornchurch were playing the trophy, I was playing for Dartford. And then I'd come back if Hornchurch had a trophy game. But mm. they didn't have any league games. So I was playing for Dartford mm. league and then going back and forth. And then there was one particular game where I think Hornchurch were playing Aidstone, maybe, I think. And Dartford were playing Welling. Mm. And that was that was the trigger. Luckily, the following week, Dartford League got locked off anyway. Mm. But that was triggered to tell me I'm going back to Hornchurch, irrespective. Mm. Because the Dartford manager at the time, Steve King, I love Kingy, but what he did was dead. So I'm saying, like, bro, what he should have done was pulled me and said, you're not going to be involved this week mm. um, of, 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 on the game on Saturday, so go, go and play with Hornchurch. Mm. And, I, and I, I gave him the opportunity. I said on Thursday training, if I'm not going to be involved, please tell me. I even came to Dartford's game with both tracksuits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, both tracksuits? Yeah. So my tra- whole track tracksuit was in my car. I came in my Dartford tracksuit. He didn't name the squad until, you know, man usually uh, named the squad early it's doors. Late, like, late, tw- late. Between yeah. 22 and 2 o'clock, the, mm. the team's announced. Ten pa- five, five to, or 10 past 2, he's named the squad. I haven't even got, I've still got time to probably get to Hornchurch, but Hornchurch obviously named the team by now. Mm. So what can I do? Mm. So I wasn't in the squad. Well, I remember Cookie tore us up. We drew two two, I think. But and I was like, and I'm just, I'm as I'm, I'm, I'm in the stands watching the game, and I'm just watching, I'm just watching Hornchurch game on my phone. <laughs> mm. I'm literally like this, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh Cookie scored, Darth has scored. Oh, great. Mm-hmm. I'm like this. I'm like, come on, come on. yeah. <laughs> People are like, what's going on? I'm like, Hornchurch one five four. I'm like buzzing. So when I did come back to Hornchurch for the trophy games. Because the rounds before, them man had done so well, mm. I was never going to start because it's got out of respect for managers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These men have been here grafting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've gone to Dartford. When you come back in, listen, got to let them do their thing. So the semi-final, Notts County, we saw that draw and we was like, well, it's been a good time. <laughs> it's been a great run. <laughs> the fairy tale's over. And, I, and I'll be honest with you, if that game had gone to extra time, the fairy tale was over. Mm. Definitely. Empty stadium, Notts County. I remember when, even when we pulled up, I still got, I got, I, I see me, I'm an energy b- a jokes guy, so I'm saying, but we pulled up to Notts County. I was like, yeah, they, they men are like overawed, like, this is nuts to them, like, mm. Notts County. I'm like, bro, like, man, was playing that, that one over there, that other not in them one, like, a few years back. <laughs> 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 this, this, this is nuts, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, but I can see, tell that some man, like, this is a this is a big deal. Mm. There's a few players in, our, in the whole church team that play pro, like, they, mm. they, they used it, but the majority hadn't. So you're not counting empty stadium. I'm thinking, and then it brings me on um, at three one. I think it was or two one. No, yeah, I think it's two one. Then we went two two. Then I think we went. They went three two, and we thought, ah, oh, so we got done. And literally, I just remember saying to Ricky Hell, just just put him down the channel, just put him in the channel, bend it down the channel. I said, mm. I remember saying to Ruffy, me and you are going to change this game. So I'm saying because. Charlie Ruff was wasn't mm. we didn't start either. Yeah. I'm gonna say to Ruffy, mean you're gonna change this game. Ricky Hell's put it down the channel. And I said, I said, Ruffy, somebody's gonna get a dick old flick to me as well. So the dick old flick is when I flick it over someone's head like Matt mm. Latissier. Mm. I used to mm. love Matt Latissier. Flicks it over my head for fun. So I've gone down the channel, flicked it over my man's head. I heard dick out. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even seen my man. I just know that's Ruffy yeah. and his back post. Yeah. <laughs> so I just lifted it back post. He's headed it back across. Mm. Nashi scored three three. We went mad because mm. we know this is the final kick of the game, mm. and we know there's not extra time. Mm. This is getting penalties, <laughs> and, and and deep down we're like, we know right is that good. Joe Wright and goal. Mm. He's that good. He's going to save a pen. Mm. We've got a chance here. Oh my god! And I'm thinking, Jesus. So. Said to us, oh, name the five penalty takers. I just looked at the gaffer. I said, five. 
That was okay, but I still went five. So he's seeing man go up. See, I think I think right he saved the third or second one. I think he mm-hmm. said the second one. And I'm like, oh my God. At that point, mm-hmm. nerves, butterflies. I won't say yeah, nerves, yeah, butterflies yeah, yeah. start kicking in because I know it's coming down it's to me. It's the excitement, me. yeah. It's coming down to me. Hundred percent. So I'm like, and because I, I don't believe any of my teammates are gonna mm. miss. Another one scores. They score. Another one scores. They score. Right. Well, and I remember stepping out. I think it's myself. This is my stage. This is my time. This is my platform because I haven't had an opportunity during this whole church journey mm. to put my yeah. my mark on it. Yeah. And I said. I'm going to enjoy this. I stood at the edge of the bus for time. If you watch this, watch it on YouTube, wherever, <laughs> I was there for a time. Empty stadium, no one Empty there. Empty stadium, no one there. Just that yeah. few little directors, yeah. whatever, but mm. I stood at the edge of the bus for time. Like, but people are watching it and streaming it. Mm. So, then I've done my normal little side jiggle jiggle, gone to the ball, wrapped it to mm-hmm. it. And I just went mad, high knees, right to right, <laughs> straight away. And I was like, ah! And that was the moment when I said, Okay, whatever happens from now on in, mm. I've got my mark at home church. Like, mm. that's it. Mm. But what everyone else is thinking is, we're going to Wembley. Mm. Yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah, I've never played at Wembley. That's nuts. My whole career, 36 years of mm. age, I've never played at Wembley. I was like, mm. who am I going to invite? Mm. <laughs> you invite everybody, bro. That's all I thought. All I mm. thought was, my whole journey and my whole football career my my parents, my parents have been to that Gillingham games. My, yeah. my sister's been to a few games. My brothers have been there. My cousins, whatever. My aunties. And at that point, I'm coaching now. I'm starting mm. my business. Mm. So I'm starting my business. So I've got all these kids that I'm, I've got. And I was like, all, I've, all I was thinking was, how many tickets am I going to need? Because who am I going to invite? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. This experience isn't going to be just about me. This is going to be about my whole family and incorporating yeah. my mm-hmm. family and letting them experience what just a small part of what yeah. I've been through. Mm-hmm. Of course. Yes. So when we get to Wembley, when we get to the chairman, chairman says, oh, how many tickets do you need, Dicko? I said, he said, everyone's getting 40. I said, nope. <laughs> I said, You're going to need to double that. I said, I need at least 80. <laughs> I said, I need at least 80. He was like, what? I said, listen, my dad's making calls to Ghana right now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get it. Like, this is, this, is, this is very real. Like, people are coming over if, they, if necessary mm. during COVID if they have to because <laughs> they, they don't want to miss this. Mm. I said, I'm going to need more than, more, than, more than 40 tickets. And plus, I've got my kids that, that I've been coaching. Mm, mm. And for me, it was, what's more inspiring than watching yeah. your coach? Mm. Who, like on the biggest, in the biggest stadium. Like like yeah, 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 home of football. In, that, that's mm. every child's mm. dream in this country. So I'm saying to play at Wembley. Mm. To go to watch games and mm. FA Cup finals. But to be there and watch it themselves. I was like, I, I just got every single one of the kids' tickets. My family was almost sec- almost almost secondary, but I was like, look, my core family, my core, my closest friends, my free- people that come to watch me over the years and see my journey. Um, and that was the highlight of that final for me. Not even the fact that I didn't... Leading up to the final, I was starting. Because Higgins, Sam Higgins got injured mm. and he wasn't training. And then the week before, he pulled the gaffer and said, I'm fit, I'll be ready. And the gaffer's gone. No, you're not. <laughs> like, no, you're not. No, you're not. But if he's telling you he's fit and he's scored so many goals to get you where you are, him and Liam Nash. Mm. Yeah, okay. What can you do? Just, yeah, you mm. just... So he pulled me. And, and the thing is, me and Mark Stimson have, have always had like a good relationship anyway. So he pulled me and just said, look, Dicko, I'm going to start him. But I'm telling you now, 60 minutes, be ready. So I'm like... Didn't you come on later? No, no, no. no 60th. Bro, you changed. Has it, have you seen, did you see the final? No. He changed the game. Right? Like, well, you got two two assists? Two assists. Two assists. Mad. We were one nil down when I came on. And literally, um, yeah, it was just I even had a part well, so people had a part to play the equalizer. Ruffy scored the equalizer, but the throw came in. The guy I jumped up with the guy, the guy jumped up, headed it into the bar. Ruffy just had a tap in the mm. back post and then headed down to Nashi, slapped him. But I'll tell you what I felt like I had more of an impact on was the fact that we'd been Training for the last six weeks, yeah. That team, mm. Ruffy, Ruffy behind me, me up top, and then in the last week, it's changed. And so, when me and Ruffy came on, it was like, Yep, 
it's gone back to normal. Yeah. Back, back to, to what, normal. Where what we've trained, what, what we've been yeah, doing yeah, for the last yeah. six weeks. Okay. Yeah. So that's just familiarity. Mm. That's just knowing that yeah. this is what it is. No, no, no offense to Spenno, mm. no offense to Sam Higgins, but because they weren't in the team mm. that that was going to start initially, and obviously Spenno had come back from injury as well. I think so. It's like they've gone in now, and obviously. Go and do your thing, so I'm saying. But ultimately, the team that was actually going to start was the team that finished. Yeah. Mm. And literally, I remember just seeing my phone after the game and said, everyone's like, this guy just came to the game. Literally. Mm. Like, I was like, God, I knew like two, two assistants. That's what I'm saying. But <laughs> I knew inside two my assists career, at Wembley I knew deep, is... deep within myself that That's I had it. changed this game. You had. And yeah. Stimo promised me 60, uh, on 60th minute, I remember sticking up my family, my family like, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> like, what's going on? I was like, just tapping it. I kept to tapping my wrist saying, 60, 60. Tap my wrist. Like, what, what, what? Bro, they, they, we're losing it. The fans was that. It was, it, I'll be honest with you, the, the game generally felt dead up until me and Ruffy came on. Mm-hmm. It didn't look great. I'm not going to lie. I remember. And literally, as soon as me and Ruffy came on, it was like a whole resurgence. It was like, whoa, we're coming alive again. And Ruffy doing like kickups on the sideline for the, for the Nashi's goals. It's like a madness. One of the kickups and then just licks it in the air. I win the head and Nashi comes and slaps mm-hmm. it in and it's like, Game over. We know we're not losing this. <laughs> obviously, I had to shout out Ellis because Ellis is gonna watch this. And say, <laughs> and I gave a little Ellis little flick on. He ran for the halfway line, and then I'm running with him like, "Els, go, just go, just go, go, go." And I thought, "Hold on a second, is this guy gonna shoot? You better square this right now." <laughs> <laughs> he shot and scored, and then he was man doing gum fingers with me. The only man I know. Was the gum <laughs> fingers with me. I said, "No, nah, but I love Ellis, man." And then yeah, but it was um that the experience for me was for my people yeah. more than, more than yeah, yeah, yeah. semi-final touched me more because I see mm. the penalty and whatever yeah, yeah, but yeah. The, the Wembley experience was my people everyone says oh mm. what was the stadium like? what, was the, what was the ground what was the change rooms at? I'm like yeah it was alright but it was good that was it, Wembley was the best, best stadium we ever played in mm. probably not no yeah. but but for my people it's the biggest experience David yeah. my dad doesn't stop talking about hey you know my son yeah he played at Wembley you know, come and chase the game FA Trophy FA Trophy the fans even say FA Cup FA Cup FA Trophy FA Trophy not FA Cup it's the equivalent it's the equivalent it's the equivalent but I was like that it's the FA Trophy but but yeah nah literally it was a, it's it, that was the experience it, that was the best feeling that all these young kids that I coach was able to oh, yeah. see me do my thing yeah. because this generation is visualist as well. Mm, yeah. yeah, that's amazing. No, well done, man. Well done, man. Yeah, look, well done, man. We, we need a part two. We can't yeah. need a part two. <laughs> either, either Mark's gonna get you. I'm gonna talk to Jono, and right. uh, Jono, one of us is gonna get you back here for a part yeah. two. We'll do it. We'll um, bag a part two definitely because that. Listen, I've enjoyed it. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I hope I can speak for everyone else. Are you chilling, man? Oh, it's, 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 been a, it's been a journey, bro. The um, one, the one thing I've liked about our, having our guests in, and I've said it earlier, and I say it again, you just yeah. you learn so much yeah. from just things they say. It yeah. might, you might just be talking just flippantly or nonchalantly, but I don't think you understand that. Like, a lot of us listeners as well, watchers, we're all listening. Like, oh my god. Really? Is that what it's like? Is that what's happening? Yeah. So, you know, we appreciate it. And again, yeah, thank you for, yeah, for man, coming and blessing us. Appreciate you for having me, man. Appreciate you for having me. So I'm saying, and I, and I hope that obviously people obviously that do tune in and see it and see, and see what you're actually building here in regards to getting messages across, getting yeah, stories yeah. across. People appreciate that, understand man. And obviously in part two, where we're going to get deep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> part two, we're going to yeah. get deep. We're going to get deep. Yeah. 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 off. We're going to get real comfortable. <laughs> we're going to get deep. There's some things that still going to be uncovered. So we're going to get deeper, yeah. definitely. But no, no, no. Listen, absolute pleasure being here. And obviously, thank you for having me. I appreciate thank you. Thank you. Thank love, you. Love, so love. for all our listeners, as usual, please uh, subscribe, like, follow, share, comment. You've seen us in the comments. We talk back. So, you know, um, we welcome all the comments. Last week, I think it was me getting roasted. Um, <laughs> hat guy. Yeah, hat guy. <laughs> hat guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, thank you very much. Thanks to our guest, Chris Dixon. Um, thanks for listening. And peace. Peace. Yeah, we peace. Love, love, love.